How's it going? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just gonna start the run without any delay. Uh, obviously, we're choosing critical mode here, so time starts when I press yes. So, um, three, two, one, go. So, uh, I guess uh, we'll start with introducing ourselves. So, uh, I'm Yiramoto. I've been running this game since launch. I am Venom Dibs. I'm also one of this category. Uh, I'm Denho, also known as Denhonator. Uh, one of the first runners of this category. Made a lot of strats for it. Uh, and this is Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, Critical Level 1, which is, uh, I guess, a, quite a new thing. Um, most of the time, uh, what's been showcased uh, was just beginner category, and this is the first time uh, not only is critical mode shown, but uh, also the PC version as well. And there are quite a lot of changes now. Um, but first, I guess we will explain the uh, the choices we make in this beginning section. Yeah, so you know, speaking balance here, so you have an option between wisdom, vitality, and balance. The balance actually gives, um, well, as the name implies, a balanced amount of HP and MP. And it actually works out really well so that we have enough HP not to get one-shotted so easily in the early game, but we also have enough MP to execute the specific strat that we need to do later on in the game. Yeah, when it comes to the second choice for this category, it doesn't matter at all. It would just determine our level up route, but since we don't level up, it doesn't matter at all. And um, of course, with the uh, the PC version, uh, it also includes the Remind DLC. And the DLC does allow us to skip the cutscenes in this beginning sections, and it saves a lot of time. Uh, it also introduces this third option. Uh, so we have three different uh, playthroughs we can choose uh, between just the normal standard playthrough, or we can have easy codes or pro codes. But in this category, obviously, we just choose um, the standard round. Um, and, and now in this uh, section, we're basically just getting an introduction to uh, setting up uh, what's going to happen. We're going to be facing uh, shadows, which is basically the basic enemies of this game. Not really much to talk about here, other than uh, they just take two hits. So I'm just going to dodge roll to the right here. Hopefully hit all of them. I miss one of them. And this is the first real boss of the game, Dark Side. Uh, Dark Side on crit is actually no joke. He can kill you pretty quickly on crit if you're not careful. But what I'm gonna do here is try and focus on the head only. And I'm gonna try and point the camera upwards and get some guards here for counter. I missed that one completely. Uh, that one missed me. <laughs> yeah, the orbs are definitely really tricky. Like, it's just awkward the way they're fl falling slowly, trying to guard them. It's just, it just doesn't always work out. But uh, finishing the fight up with uh, uh, blocking those orbs, getting critical counters. So one of the abilities uh, you start with on critical mode, it boosts your counter damage. Also in critical mode, you actually start with these counter abilities, which you normally wouldn't. So uh, a few notes about critical mode is that um, you have half the HP, half the MP, but you do start with some abilities you normally wouldn't. So we have some extra air slides. We have those counter abilities we mentioned and uh, three critical mode specific abilities. Well, we'll get more into those later. Uh, for now, what he is doing, he's uh, actually taking off one of the keyblades. It's like a DLC keyblade. It's not part of this uh, category. Taking off some items from party members so that they don't waste them. Uh, putting on zero XP because this is level one and taking off some abilities that we don't want to be um, used. Uh, for this fight, Yida wants to use Rising Spiral on this large body to get up in the air. It's um, actually really safe to be here in air and also what it allows is to perform this dive attack because he gains so much height yeah, and that's nice. that just opens up the fight really well. Yeah, it really deals a lot of AoE damage, and you also get some iframes for that dive attack. So it's both safe and also very efficient. Yeah, and it one-shots these enemies. So as you can imagine, if you can get a bunch of them, uh, it just completely 
finishes the fight. Uh, right now we're heading up uh, to basically the main part of... Uh, well, I wouldn't say the main part, but the city uh, of this world, which is uh, Olympus, Hercules. Um, and speaking of Hercules, we now have him in the party, uh, although it's just for one fight at the moment. Um, but what we're going to do now is go into our customize, and we're actually going to change the AI of our party members. And also just a little tutorial here, I guess, uh, of the shop and save point. We're not really going to use them at the moment. Well, save point for now to restore our our MP. Oops. Um, so I'm changing Donald and Goofy's uh, AI to only throw items on me and to make them use it as frequently as possible. And Hercules, I'm turning him off because he can disrupt uh, a lot of things if he does, like, those punches that can stun enemies when I really don't want him to. Yeah, now we're fighting flame cores, and uh, in this game we have water, which coincidentally is uh, very effective against flame cores. It actually sort of stuns them so that they can't really attack after you use water them. Also, just a lot of damage overall. And one thing I've noticed is the flame cores drop these MP orbs, which really helps sustain the MP usage, allowing Yida to just use water on all of them. And that was a good fight. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, we also took off the treasure magnet ability on our party members so that we make sure that they're not stealing our MP orbs for those fights. And also for some fights later on. Yeah, MP management um, is pretty difficult, uh, especially in the beginning game. Uh, so another thing about crit is our MP and HP is greatly reduced from the other categories. Um, it, it, it's a lot better um, to stick around uh, the flame cores after killing them to get the MP orbs. Uh, whereas other categories, we try to air slide to other flame cores to carry the water shields to hit them. Uh, sometimes it is a good idea, but MP management is really difficult, so we want to grab all the MP orbs we can. That was a good fight as well. Yeah, you could even see Yida destroy some pots there which uh, drop MP orbs. That just goes to show how uh, you usually need to manage your MP. Um, a bit of a moment section here, actually just air sliding through a trigger instead of using this Trinity sled that the game tries to tell you to use. And we'll see some flow motion here, bouncing off these walls, so using a uh, wall kick, and then going into uh, super slides. And also just uh, chaining air slides, cancelling air slides with attacks, and into just more air slides moving in the air quickly. So here, uh, the first thing I do is just uh, do a pulse spin, which is another flow motion movement. Um, but it also sucks in enemies and groups them up, so I wanted to do that to make sure my water shield was hitting a bunch of them. That was a great fight. Thank you, Donald, for the blizzard. And now I'm going to basically destroy this statue of and then grab this chest, which is a magic ring, which won't be used now, but it's important later on. Also, towards the end of the previous fight, you saw one of the flame cores, like, growing red, going all over the arena. Uh, we might be able to showcase that better off in the next fight. But yeah, they have some sort of special attack they can use once they've taken enough damage which out without being hit by waters beforehand. Yeah, also taking a little d detour to grab an ether here. We're going to need a lot of ethers and tree focusers especially for this run, so you'll see that throughout, just uh, little detours to grab those useful items. Um, so this is the start of the so-called building fight, and now we get access to form changes and grand magic. Um, so as Yida attacks his enemies, you can see these arrows build up next to the uh, command menu on the bottom left. And when that fills up, Yida is going to get some situation commands. And now what we can get is a stronger version of water that we can use once. And a uh, second form, which just popped up. So second form is uh, keyplate transformation. So depending on the keyplate, you get 
like a specific set of abilities and attacks, uh, t um, kind of making you more powerful. In this case, um, a second form especially has Magnet Splash, which is um, it's like the sixth hit of the combo uh, if you're in the air. So you want to use um, attacks uh, and magic in the air and then follow up with a Magnet Splash, which just grabs enemies from uh, far away. Just kind of groups them up to deal damage. Oh, oh. <laughs> Very yeah, unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it Olympus is very dangerous. Uh, that's just uh, critical in a nutshell. A lot of enemies can just kind of combo you to death. Yeah, this is easily one of the hardest fights in, in like the first hour of the run. One thing to note, though, um, I am intentionally making sure uh, most of the flame cores are out of sight in terms of where I'm facing the camera. Um, they can't actually attack while they're off the screen, so that's just something that I'm making sure I'm keeping in mind of. So I'm just gonna get a maggot splash here and hopefully grab all the shadows that one-shots them. Very nice. And now I'm just gonna kill three flame cores to spawn the next wave. And now I'm just going to try and get another Magnet Splash. That's scary. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> they really don't want me to win. Uh, I guess I'm going to run out of second form very soon. Doesn't matter. Um, what matters is just not dying at this point. Yeah, the unfortunate thing about Magnet Splash is that you need to be able to keep your combo going in the air and these flame cores uh, really love to interrupt your combos. Yeah, also Magnet Splash has like a very long animation where you can get interrupted. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> 120 isn't really the best time, especially after taking death as well. Uh, but now I'm unequipping this ability that I equipped uh, at the start, Critical Converter. Uh, what it does is it guarantees a form, uh, because normally getting those uh, situation commands, it is RNG, but Critical Converter basically lets us get a form guaranteed no matter what we're using. So if we're using magic to build up arrows, we get the form. But another thing it also does is it disables attractions. Um, for example, like the pirate ship I just got. Uh, we really want the pirate ship here. Uh, but on critical mode, there is a change in how frequent you can get them. So all the other categories, uh, for example, this fight for the attraction tutorial, you would be guaranteed to the pirate ship. But it seems like they've decreased the chance a lot on critical. So uh, normally we would try and death abuse until we get it at the start, but luckily I got it first try here. Yeah, that was good. Do you have time for a very tiny announcement? Uh, yes. Yeah. We just hit $31,000. So, um... I just grabbed an ether by quickly going into the workshop. That's going to be important later on. Um, and now we're just in the other part of Olympus, out of the town now, and we are going up Mount Olympus. Uh, this is bad. <laughs> These flame cores are very dangerous, by the way. Yeah, it's 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 oh pretty no. tricky. Yeah, so you know, I was trying to get a ledge grab there. It, it's a like it may, may have looked like he was far from that, le far from grabbing that ledge, but Torres should kind of just you know just magnetize towards that ledge and, and grab it, but uh, didn't quite get there this time. Yeah, um, so, all Go ahead. yeah so, so what's going on now is that we're doing this uh, air slide into attack that you can just repeat uh, indefinitely and skipping over this gap. 
So well, that, that was a little scary with the camera, but uh, <laughs> essentially that allows us to skip one forced fight. There's actually two options that you can do, uh, two different fights you can choose from, but we can actually just skip over it like that. And also now we're uh, changing some abilities. The biggest change here is equipping Lucky Strike on Goofy. So that increases the chances of uh, drops from enemies like synthesis materials, uh, which is very important. We really need uh, to get the workshop moving. Uh, there are important items that we would want to synth later. Uh, and also just uh, check off some uh, missions from the Moogle so we can get s uh, certain items we need as well. Yeah. Also, something you may have been seeing is uh, Yida air sliding close to the ground and just repeatedly air sliding. We call that air slide chaining. It's uh, one uh, form of movement. S uh, essentially, if you're really close to the ground and your timing is good, you can just chain air slide after air slide without uh, delay. I it can be tricky. It depends a little bit on the um, on where you are. But if it goes well, Yeda can move really fast with that. Uh, so now we have Rock Titan, and there is actually a very special skip we can do here. So what I'm going to do is jump on top of its feet, hopefully land. And if I time it right, jump, attack, magic, and an air slide. And we basically skipped an entire section of the fight, but now we just need to get onto the hand. Go up a bit more. That's great. And now we just head over to the heads. So the heads uh, <laughs> basically can't do anything to us. We basically skipped an entire section of the fight. Normally we have to attack the legs to break them and then uh, the game will just let us climb up to the heads. But now we're just attacking and Basically grinding for a second form right now. Making sure I'm not using any magic because that could potentially give me Waterer instead of second form. And now I'm just going to run out of MP. Go into Scoter. And that's pretty under damage. I'm just going to do a few shots here. And then I'll use the finisher, which should one-shot it right now. Nice, Thanks. good fight. Uh, and the reason why I want to bring uh, uh, to get second form here is because I want to bring it to the next fight. And uh, having maxed out movement in critical makes it very easy. Um, I even have enough time to grab this fluoride chest, which is used to upgrade weapons. Uh, but that will be uh, a little bit later on. Right, so, so what's coming up is the Satyr's fight. And that uh, introduces a new mechanic, which is enemies having armor and we need to break that armor uh, before we can actually damage the enemies so they have like a common armor bar uh, between all the satyrs but after you break it they split into like individual enemies with just a little bit of hp so what you don't want us to do is get a stagger with some fires and then use water oh. Ooh. Uh, okay okay back up <laughs> Okay, so al alternatively, uh, stun impact breaks the ar armor basically instantly if you get in the in middle of them. Not quite what the plan was, but uh, that, that was a good recovery. Yeah, the original plan um, was uh, you want to build up Sonic Blade, which is the second finisher of second form. Uh, and just use that to zoom through all the enemies and basically destroy the whole thing. Um, but unfortunately, I couldn't stagger them with the first three fires, so I just had to go in with the backup strat, which is just dodge rolling into them and using stun impact, it, which also instantly destroys the armor. Uh, but cleaning up is a lot more inconsistent that way. Yeah. T to be clear, uh, second form has these different finishers. So the first finisher is uh, stun impact, but if you uh, build the situation gauge up after that, then you get Sonic Blade, and if you do it again, then you get Ars Ar Arcanum. Uh, so it has these tiers, but it's kind of unique to second form. Uh, anyway, we get introduced to air stepping, and uh, that also being used to do this dive attack, grabbing this elixir will be very useful later on. 
Um, so air slipping, basically you can just aim at targets and immediately jump to them. Um, so basically to any enemy you can air step and some specific air step targets. So now we have uh, Titans and the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, Shot Lock. This is the first time we're seeing it in a run. So what we can do with Shot Lock is basically aim and try and get these ticks on enemies. And once you fill up the counter, it sort of does this kind of shooting attack, which is generally a lot of damage. Uh, we wanted to do that on Ice Titan because it is uh, a lot easier to aim at it. Lava Titan tends to go invincible when it starts attacking. Uh, but while Lava Titan is vulnerable, I'm just going to be doing a few slaps here and there, trying to build up second form. Looks like Ice Titan is... All right, they're both idle. So I want to get into the middle of them and just do hits with second form. And some of them will hit uh, Ice Titan. All right, and now Tornado Titan has appeared after a certain uh, HP uh, gate, in a way, after you do a certain amount of damage to them. And now we're using this attraction, Magic Carousel, which automatically brings us to the middle uh, of this tower. I'm just gonna use the finisher to hit them both. So yeah, the general idea is just alternating between them, but I do want to get rid of the Lava Titan as soon as possible. Here's ours, which is the strongest attack from second form. Yeah, the Titans have this interaction with each other, the Ice Titan can freeze Lava Titan, and Lava Titan can sort of stun Ice Titan, so that's what we saw there. I also just saw the free status element. Okay, nice. <laughs> Second form. I uh, just need to get a little bit more damage in. That should be enough, and I'm just gonna shot lock, but I don't want to be on the ground. In case I get hit. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> a 1HP <one> hero. <laughs> yeah, one, one thing I know also on crit is that you do start with Soldier's Earring, which gives us extra strength, so, so that's kind of also one reason why our strategies are so um, like physical-based. So... Now that we brought second form into uh, this fight, um, which is Tornado Time, by the way, uh, we just want to build ours as quickly as we can. And once we have it, we're just going to pop it here. Intentionally not using the finisher because we don't want to stagger it. Once we stagger it, it does uh, delay it from going into this next phase. Uh, so we're just going to dive down. Takes a while. It's pretty scary that I have half HP right now because I am in one shot range from those bigger debris. <laughs> yeah, the generally... Oh. Oh. Uh, the generally, you, you want to stick to the, like, bottom half of the... Uh, or, like, bottom part of the screen. But but even then, sometimes some random projectile just hits you. Um, it, it's, it, it's a little random. Um, for, for this... Um, we want to do a sort of loop where we end with a water finisher. So uh, Tornado Titan just gets staggered from these magic finishers, and that allows us to just keep him in a, in a loop for quite a while. And we did get the blaster uh, blaster plates, uh, an attraction very useful. You don't always get it on critical mode. This is awkward. Uh, that water didn't stun it. Um, I just have to hope it doesn't teleport away. All right, just keep it stunned. And now I can Sonic Blade to hopefully finish it off. Nice. Nice. Good so. <laughs> 
Yeah, in general, after you get past the diving part, uh, you shouldn't get hit at all as long as you keep it in the middle. But yeah, that was a pretty scary fight. So now we've finished up Olympus Colosseum and we get reward with Hero's Origin, another Keyblade, and we're gonna equip that. And uh, in Cage 3, you do have three different Keyblade slots that you can uh, swap between in, in real time during combat. And we are going to utilize that, and we're especially going to utilize the form change of Hero's Origin in uh, Twilight Town coming up soon. But for now, we have this section that we play as Shriku, uh, we partnered with uh, Miki, beating this Demon Tower. So, important note here is that when Demon Tower is stacking, when he's kind of glowing red a little bit, he's not taking a lot of damage. Uh, so we want to time our attacks when uh, he's not doing that. Triku does have some Daga that he can use, and then he hits uh, melee combo. The finisher is kind of... Um, can, can sometimes just um, sort of miss entirely and not be very useful. Um, did get both Sandaza and Double Duel, that's exactly what we want to see, dealing the big damage. Good fight. Yeah, uh, in general you do want Mickey to do a lot of work for you as well. I think he did about a bar earlier, but <laughs> I'm not really sure. Yeah, it looked good. Uh, we do have time for a donation. Well, I appreciate that. We have a $25 donation from Robo Sparkle. It says, Yida, take my energy. ESA, take my cash. Good luck on the run. Thank you. <laughs> is that, okay, a quick, a quick note about what's going on now is the uh, gummy space. So um, this is a guy in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, especially if you're... If, played them but now it's a little bit different it's like an open world you can just fly freely in this space uh we're gonna be collecting some money destroying some blue rocks hoping for some keyblade material uh keyblade upgrade material drops also picking up this waypoint so we can uh start from there later um skipping uh more or making travel time a bit um shorter later yeah uh, gummy has been routed pretty interestingly there are so many different possibilities especially with how uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 has kind of introduced this open world gummy ship uh, kind of thing. Um, but we wanted to. Uh, we, it, it put a, a lot of time was put into it, and in general, for Twilight Town specifically, it is best to grab that specific waypoint so that later on uh, we can have access to other worlds quickly. Um, yeah, uh, we're quickly approaching Twilight Town, and um, it's gonna, going to open up with a fight right away, and um, we're going to see some shot locks, but also our first use of a summon, or, well, named uh, Lynx in this game more specifically. Um, we're going to be using Miawa, but uh, just using it quickly, just using the uh, finisher. Actually, a lot of big reason is to get rid of our MP, which will activate our critical recharge, which will boost the rate at which we build our situation gauge, those uh, arrows that will appear on the bottom left. We did also get the attraction pirate ship right away. That's an attraction we definitely want to see this in, the uh, in this fight. Uh, okay, so I just need to kill three of these to spawn the next wave. And now we're just going to be using Buzz Souls, which is uh, just another flow motion attack. We just air step into groups and hit multiples. Gets arrows really quickly. And now we're just uh, going to be guarding with Counter Shield to build up these charges. And essentially what you do is just try and block twice. And then once you do that, you can just hit them with... A barrage of hits. I lost a pirate ship though. <laughs> oh, there's another one at the top. Okay, I'll grab that. If I can. Uh. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> what a godly parry. And I don't really know where I. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't really see much, but hopefully they're in a big group. And you just want to swing as much as possible and 
try and hit a bunch of them. And then once it's about to finish, I'll just use the finisher here. Hopefully most of them are gone. And nope. There's a sniper with a lot of HP right now. Ooh, there's another one? There's another one, yeah. Okay, I'm scared. Ugh. No. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what's going on. There it is. <laughs> yeah, snipers uh, are real trolls in this game. They're, sometimes you can just see them disappear for a minute straight, and you'll never catch them. Anyway, we'll go right into our Demon Tide, and we're going to use that counter shield to create effect here. Uh, actually, because it is thunder damage, that's especially effective um, against this boss, but also we're going to make sure we get critical counters, which is uh, timing our guard just right to increase our counter damage. And we combine that with getting these two guards and unleashing this very powerful attack. And also popping second form at the end of it, Thank that you. allows us to actually store the counter so that it doesn't go away. We can just immediately use it again, but we do need to wait for the boss to come Back to us. There we go. Switch. Yeah, I thought it was going to be way too high for me to <laughs> guard, but luckily it came down. Yep. Now you're going to see uh, Yida take pictures of these lucky emblems. Um, we will want 20 of these for this run. That will, at the end, give us a magic boost, uh, just permanently increasing our magic, as this is level 1, we actually truly want to make sure we increase our magic as much as we can. Um, yeah, uh, unlike some, um, unlike for example Cage 1 and Cage 2, especially towards the end game, your stats don't really matter too much. In this game, throughout the whole game, level 1, we do need to worry about our magic stat in particular. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how many of our tools are linked or scaled with our magic stat. So now we have uh, Power Wilds, which are very annoying enemies, actually. Um, the idea here is to build up second form with... Uh, it's not second form, uh, Sonic Blade in second form right now. And then I'm going to switch to Hero's Origin and just kill them one by one. Hero's Origin has higher strength anyways, so it's much easier to deal with these uh, with Hero's Origin instead of uh, Kingdom Key. And we have Counter Shield. We're not going to go into that yet because it's much quicker to... Ooh! Okay, maybe I should. <laughs> it's much quicker to kill them uh, as base Sora, but I guess this is safer. Thank you, Goofy. Yeah, what, one note about Counter Shield is that while you're in that form, you have second chance and withstand combo, which means that as long as you have some HP remaining, you cannot die from a single hit or or a single combo. So that does offer us some uh, measure of protection. And now that we've won the last wave, we're using now our finishers three times, and now they're all one sh uh, one hit away from death. I'm just going to use Sonic Blade to clear all of them and easy. That's good. Good fight. Yep. Uh, and now... Oh, I guess we haven't explained uh, Lucky Emblems. I've been collecting them. Oh. Uh, I think we did. Uh, I... I oh, uh, did you want to talk more about them? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I missed it. Uh, I mean, one other thing we could mention about Lucky Emblems is that we're also getting a magic accessory, some armor to sell for later. But the main thing uh, that we're looking out for is getting 20 Lucky Emblems to get the magic boost. And they're like 90 in total um, across the game. Yeah, yeah. there, there are many useful rewards. Uh, I believe uh, we do have some use for the Moon Amulet you get at uh, 15 emblems and there would be useful rewards later on but it's just not worth the time uh, and now we have mansion fight which is just basically these two types of enemies they are very annoying uh, but we just want to start off by building counter shields and then grind second form 
Okay, that's bad. Oh. Okay, that took a while, but um, now we want to use a Magnus Splash here and gather them all into this one section and just destroy these bunch. And now we use Teacups in second form in particular because it, a King Key does have higher magic than Hero's Origin and the attractions do scale with magic. And now we're just going to use Shot Luck to hopefully clear all of them. I think there are too many though. Yeah, and a lot of them have really high HP. Um, but doesn't matter, we can use the finisher of Hero's Origin and clear out a bunch of them. The unfortunate thing is I can't actually control where I'm going, so I'm just mashing X and hoping for the best. But it looks like it's doing a good job. The yeah, counter shield finisher is something uh, you would never want to see in a beginner any percent speedrun. But this is level 1 critical mode and uh, sometimes we just have to use everything that we have at our disposal that can safely deal with a group of enemies. Yeah, that's still somewhat effective since the area is oh. fairly confined. I got sniped there. <laughs> um, so now we're just heading back to uh, the town and not really much to talk about, so we have a time for a donation. All right, sounds good. We have $25 from Rain205. Says, proud of you, Yida. Good luck and early congrats on the run. Much love from over here. Less than three. Hashtag 119. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, don't worry about the 119. <laughs> so now we're just collecting uh, these ingredients. And some lucky emblems along the way. This is sort of an introduction to uh, cooking, which will be explained later. I did, did get that uh, lucky emblem on the protector screen. That's actually, if you played this game, you might be thinking like, hey, isn't there supposed to be like a movie playing that you need to wait out before you can get it? There's actually a specific movement that, that Yida did there that uh, made it so it's actually just blank and you're able to uh, get the lucky emblem very useful for this route and now we're just doing a quick shop uh, to buy more ingredients and then upgrading a uh, shooting star with the fluorite yeah shooting star is gonna have uh, the most magic out of our keyblades right now so definitely going to be using that and that's the end of Twilight Town. Uh, now we're just uh, going to be uh, cooking in space, basically. Uh, you can actually access the bistro from the gummy menu here. Yeah, it's rather convenient, especially in terms of load times. It's very quick to load into bistro and into world map, so you can just quickly transition between this, the, uh, those. Uh, so we're cooking this fish. It's like a small mini game. You need to time this uh, just not like your analog stick when the circle closes. Uh, the reason we want to do this is that this way we get this uh, like excellent food. It has like this plus sign at the end of it. And having that kind of food in a full course meal allows you to get these better full course bonuses. Specifically, if you have exactly one of those excellent foods, the rest of the foods in, in the um, in the in the meal are normal. Then you can either get hearty meal or cuisine extender. And hearty meal is exactly what we want. It increases the stats we get from the food by 25%, giving us just more HP, more MP, and more magic. It's just very useful. Um, so now we're making our way to the next world, and one thing I'm going to do here is quickly take a picture. There we go. So nice picture. <laughs> that's a cute Moogle right there. Um, we took a, cons a picture of a constellation, and constellations basically give you a free gummy ship. The reason why we did that is because uh, Mo the Moogle ship is way faster than this gummy ship we have. 
Yeah. But now we have to talk about gummy skip. So there are gummy bosses uh, preventing access to these worlds. But if you open the camera right at the start of the fight, you just get free of access to move to the world and just go past the boss and enter the world and that's it. Yeah, and it's a lot easier to do on PC now, um, especially since uh, on console, it the gummy sections are actually kept on uh, to 30 FPS, but on PC, uh, having access to higher FPS allows uh, you to have a bigger window to uh, catch the right f uh, to, to catch the gummy skip. Um, so here is a uh, toy box, and we're starting straight away with another fight, um, Andy's room. And for this first wave, I'm going to be using the shooting star, uh, star shot lock and kill three of them. That is not good. You want to specifically only target uh, two at a time for me to do this specific full shot lock. If I target more than two, then I will do a very, very bad shot lock that basically misses the majority of stuff. But now I'm just going to spam bustles and get arrow guns as quick as possible. That is not a bustle, but I'll take it. <laughs> And now we're going to Meow Meow. And uh, we haven't really dashed with Meow Meow in Twilight Town, but now we'll be seeing this dash move. Again, like the Hero's Origin finisher, I can't control where I'm going, which is unfortunate, but it is a lot of damage. And we spawn the final wave as well. We want to get them to as low HP as possible and hopefully clear a lot of them with the finisher. Alright, that's most of them, and now I'm just going to shot lock with Kingdom Key. I believe it's just these two. Yeah, the, the, the way the play dash on Miawa works is that it tends to home towards the enemies, but sometimes the tracking just isn't quite there and it just goes around the enemies and doesn't hit anything, but, but that was actually a, a pretty good fight. Yeah, it also sometimes can happen that you actually get stuck under the bat. And then you yeah. cannot use the finisher of Meow, which is really unfortunate. A few more lucky emblems, just crapping them quickly on the way, then moving on to the. Um, what is it? Galaxy, the Galaxy Gal Store? Galaxy Toys, I think? Yeah, uh, yeah Galaxy Toys. Yeah, and um, another thing to note is uh, in the shop I also bought uh, more food as well, which I'll be using later to eat a full uh, course meal. Uh, but right now we will be getting an introduction to mech fights. So mechs are kind of uh, different depending on the colors, uh, but we are actually in a blue mech right now and blue mechs specialize uh, in using exploders, which is those big <laughs> white balls I'm shooting essentially. Um, okay, I'm very low in health. Um, but the idea here is I want to just try and clear them as quickly as possible, but I also want to grab this specific chest here for the high refocuser. And then go back in, try and get another exploders out if I can, and then we're just gonna go here and grab this lucky emblem. Alright, I'm gonna switch to a different mech with more health, because that's scary. Yeah, the thing with mechs is that um, being level 1 doesn't hurt, they, uh, they don't go off of Sora's stats. But being on critical mode makes it uh, quite tricky. You just take a lot of damage. Uh, you can very easily lose your mech. Ah. Yeah, they they can dodge the exploders if they just jump or dash like this red mech did at the wrong time. But uh, that was a good fight. That's why you also saw Ida aiming his camera in a very specific way. You want to really make sure that both rounds of your exploders hit the mech to deal the most amount of damage. Yeah, exploders uh, shoot at a specific, uh, in a specific way. It shoots from the right shoulder of the mech and then the left shoulder. So we kind of just want to move the camera left to right uh, to try and maximize the amount of hits we get in. 
For this fight, we just have the Shred mech available, and this is more of a melee combat-focused mech. So our punches are very uh, effective, and we have this tackle move, which dashes forward, dealing a lot of damage. We do try to uh, hit multiple of them uh, with uh, like a single punch and single tackle, uh, kind of getting getting caught in there in some like crossfire. But fortunately, the game was kind enough to put two of these mechs in this room, so we can just grab the spare one. Uh, and now we have quite a long movement, so we have time for another donation. All right, sounds good. We have one hundred dollars from Level Story that says. This might be a good spot to find some ingredients. <laughs> the classic. Uh, this fan is evil if it catches you. <laughs> it can deal a lot of damage, especially on crit as well. I didn't even know it can hurt you while it's spinning, but that's a thing. And um, now we're... Oh, sorry. Yeah, something important we're doing here is we're grabbing the gold amulet uh, in chest here. What it does is it turns all small money orbs into big money orbs. I believe it's uh, essentially turning orbs of one money into five money, if I'm not mistaken on the numbers. Uh, and you, you can equip that on your party members. It doesn't have to be on Sora. So we just uh, put it there and uh, it's going to be there on for the whole game. And we just get a lot more money out of it. Yeah, money is really tight on Quidler 1. So we have to make sure we get the most amount out of it. Yeah, especially with the amount of food we need to buy. Um, and we really need a lot of ethers, so we always got to keep them in stock. So next fight is uh, Angelic Amber. Uh, she's uh, weak to fire, so... What Yida's gonna do is it's gonna go out of bounds and uh, he's gonna grab this chest. Uh, just as a potato tripping, and then he's gonna grab a mech here uh, for firepower. <laughs> and then he's <laughs> just gonna go back and uh, it's gonna be on the other side of the wall, but fortunately we can um, just hit the boss from here with this mech. Yeah, we wanted to hug. Uh, basically be in between this window and the house. Just trap it here, and as long as we keep punching it, she cannot phase transition. I didn't punch her high enough. But that's unfortunate, but she's still vulnerable, so I can still hit her here. There we go. Oh, that was good. Also, this may have looked very easy, but you really want to make sure that you're not going too far to the right of the window, because then you can spawn in some enemies, including a mech, which can deal a lot of damage to you still. Yeah, and also the way Gita went out of bounds, he, like, you may have, may have thought, like, like, wow, he just flew out, like, it was nothing. It's kind of a specific uh, timing. As you're jumping on a plushie, you need to uh, airstep so that you, you like airs the mid animation and that allows you to just go through walls. Uh, now the mini UFO fight, uh, instead of HP, it has like a sort of hit counter. You can see on the top left, there's like a um, kind of health bar, but it's different. Uh, so we use arrow guns. This has this auto fire mode. Uh, shooting very rapidly, depleting that bar quickly. Um, I'm gonna continue here because if you retry, you do lose the form. <laughs> yeah, really unfortunate. It's a, it's a pretty scary fight if you're not high enough. Yeah, that is uh, why I ate food right before the fight. I do want to eat food for more HP, otherwise they would one-shot me more. All right, see if this works now. The boss has uh, a specific uh, pattern that it will um, always do. So, so Yida does know like what, where he needs to go and just aim at the right spots and the boss is just going to move there and then get hit. So 
Yeah, get, get well. We got we got to show the uh, fight the way it was yeah. intended. <laughs> that's that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. Also, you got to see one advantage of the PC version. Like in the PC version, you can just continue since you are using the loadless timer as our timing method. But on console, your one would be invalid if you press continue since your IGG is getting reset. That's our main timing method for that. Yeah, a lot of um, things have kind of been unlocked in terms of uh, the rules, uh, like continuing being allowed now, uh, which makes running this category in particular uh, much less of a pain. So we've been playing with Max a lot, and now we're gonna play with Max some more. Uh, it's more of a sort of a, in mini game format. We need to um, first we need to kill a specific number of these mechs, and uh, we have a very specific strat blowing up these bombs and breaking this glass, drop them on that trap. And then, in this phase, we need to uh, destroy these uh, prime mechs. They are marked with this uh, purple arrow. Oh no! Well, this is bad. Um, okay, I guess I have to go around here then. So the, the Prime Mechs do spawn at the same places every time, uh, and you do want to shoot these bombs to hit them. But unfortunately, one of them just happened to fly towards me. Now I'm just going to... Oh, that one's stuck for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 3 is a great game. <laughs> uh, but now we have the final mech. And the first thing I'm going to do is just try to get as much damage as I can, so I'm going to use Exploder on it. And then I'm going to try and get it to phase 2, which is about one and a half bars down here. Exploders again, which I missed. Uh, I'm bad. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, 117 is uh, <laughs> not a great time. <laughs> Normally you want to aim for a sub one at least. Yeah, it was just very unlucky that that one prime decided to fly towards you. Anyway, at, at the end of uh, Venom Rex, we do unlock another link. Uh, the uh, Shrekid Trout, which is going to be used to a uh, great effect later. We'll see a lot more of um, him. Uh, just equipping some stuff now. Equipping the gold amulet on Donald, actually. It doesn't actually matter who you put it on. It just needs to be uh, on someone who's currently in the fight, and it will still convert the money for you. Intentionally dodge rolling through this specific um, ground trigger. Uh, so hopefully the enemies don't spawn. Yep. They did not spawn, so you can actually skip uh, enemies here, which are really dangerous as you're trying to traverse. Um, especially the purple mechs that can actually one-shot you with their cannon. That was the classic Donald line. <laughs> and now we have more mech actions, so I'm gonna prioritize killing the blue mech as well. It's just a safety thing. Um, it doesn't matter which order you kill them in, but with how quickly you can lose your mech, you want to kill a blue mech to have a backup uh, or that one just randomly jumped down next to me okay I, I'm missing all the punches also these fights can be somewhat scary since we are on critical mode we take way more damage than them more difficulties you can go oh, way more ham than this yeah. The current objective here is to assemble these blocks. Uh, all of them have a t uh, fight uh, tied to them that we need to deal with. And um, after assembling all of them, it creates a path uh, forward to the boss of this world. Uh, for this fight, um, or, or we just go to the um, middle of this place and use Miawa. So the finisher of Miawa, the, the radius is just very big. You can see we got 24 hits with that finisher and we have just enough magic to destroy all the smallest enemies. So we just need to do a little bit of clean up here, uh, kill those enemies and then just go up here and uh, 
clean up the rest. Yeah. Also on a random note, none of these fights have a checkpoint. You have to beat them in one sitting. <laughs> Yeah, if you die, you start at the very beginning again. It's pretty scary. Um, and this is going to be the first time where we use the purple mech. Uh, purple mech specializes more in shooting. So I'm going to be using cannons and try and hit as much of this first wave as possible. I think I did. No, I didn't. <laughs> Aimed at the wrong spot. Uh, I'm going to try again. The good thing about... Uh, next is you can actually just leave and go back into them and you just immediately get your uh, triangle attacks back again and with how slow your cannons recharge it's actually much faster to do that here uh, oh there's one alive and i'm just gonna pick up a bunch of these synth materials normally i don't do this but it is a lot safer to try and get as many materials as possible yeah, with these sense items, uh, some of them we will be needing for Keyblade upgrading, which is very important to get it done. If you have truly bad RNG, you might not have the materials you need. But another thing is that you need some sense materials to get this magic boost reward from the Moogle. Like just, just like a mission for collecting different sense materials, you just get rewarded with magic boost. So that we will need later. So now instead of finding the boss of Toy Box, we leave and head for uh, Kingdom of Corona. Uh, we um, put this Moogle ship to use. Uh, as I said earlier, it's just faster. We don't need to do any combat. Um, so why not? Um, and as we're making our way to the next world, we have time for another donation. All right, thank you so much. We have $25 from Thar. That says, hi, Yida. Good luck, my guy. I will donate another $25 if you do the experience glitch. <laughs> Smiley face. Also, <laughs> big boys. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I will do a glitch that makes me level up a lot on level one. <laughs> All right, and now we are in Kingdom of Corona, not the same kind of Corona we know. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, Meow Wow to one-shot those small plants. They are in one-shot range of it, um, and then just clear up these guys. And now we're just going to shot lock with Kingdom Key. So the cool thing about uh, shot locks, or full shot locks rather, is you briefly go into the form uh, of the Keyblade, and second form actually has a Master Treasure Magnet, so as you can see, I immediately sucked up all those MP orbs and had uh, enough MP recharge to go back into the second Meow Meow. Once again, shot locking them after another Meow Meow finisher. And we just clear up these guys, and that's the end of the fight. And we have a new important spell, which is Arrow, which um, is important for the next fight. Um, but quickly customizing a lot of stuff for both early game and end game. So, what I did there was customize um, Blizzard and uh, also base fire, that is important as well. Blizzard is good for making uh, these Blizzard rail, uh, rails that you can slide on and it's cool movement for super long flat surfaces. Um, that's not going to be used for now, but it will be used later. And base fire, it's going to be for MP efficiency instead of using higher tier fires, which uh, I'll explain later on. But for now, why is error important? Um, so these bigger plants have uh, armor, and you can actually just destroy the armor immediately just by using arrow. And the idea now is to just quickly build up double arrogans, go into MP recharge, and now we're just going to grind arrows. Yeah, so, so kind of like the second form has multiple tiers of finishes, double arrogans has multiple tiers of form changes. 
so from arrow guns we can move to magic launcher uh, which instead of shooting rapidly these small shots it can shoot these big explosions and as you can see there are many small enemies here so you can imagine how that's useful and we went into counter shield briefly to get two guards that's going to be used later on but for now uh, this is a very str uh, fun strat I absolutely love using a magic launcher using this finisher at the right time to hopefully finish off the fight nice that's good that was really quick yeah <laughs> so now we're just uh, making our way further um, not much to say at the moment so I guess we have more time for more donation All right, appreciate it. We have a $50 donation from Anonymous. There's no comment, but we appreciate the donation nonetheless. 25 of it goes to the Pokemon Sword, and Sword Tower of Two Fists, name to be James Pond. And $25 for that goes to the Get Urshifu uh, incentive for Pokemon Sword and Tower of Two Fists as well. And those uh, donate those incentives are coming up in about four run three or four runs from now. So feel free when you're putting your donations in to throw it to some incentives. That way we can get a little bit extra fun content here at ESA Winter 22. Oh. So, so we did get, get into this new fight. Uh, new enemies get introduced here, Shreepers. Uh, they have this fire vulnerability where um, but they can actually go invulnerable to all other attacks except fire, so that's why we're using fire so much. And what we also want to do is use these arrow guns and a fire rasa. We picked up the fire coupling in toy box, which turns our fire grand magic into fire rasa, which is the strongest grand magic tier you can have. And in this particular form, it will shoot eight different projectiles, just dealing a lot of damage to all these creepers that are here <laughs> okay yeah sometimes fire can just easily whiff or just go all over the arena without hitting anything yeah and we do want to keep that magic launcher that we just built will be used later so also to, to note uh, we can keep these form changes throughout all this movement just by um, putting on some key plate that doesn't have a form or you know, you know, we just keep those form changes stored on those key plates that are not currently in use. Um, so now we're just making our way through the swamp. Hopefully we don't die to a certain group of power wilds very soon, because they can just throw these nuts at you and uh, <laughs> stun you, and another one can just basically combo you to death. Uh, coming up right here, actually. There's something you can do for safety, you can walk up by using the magic launcher because every form change is immune to any status ailment you can get. Right. And now we're at the campsite. Um, there's a little bit of interesting movement here. We're gonna make use of a um, uh, magic launcher. So not only is magic launcher important for the next fight, but double flight is important for skipping a bunch of these sections. Um, normally you would have to go through these uh, sections where Rapunzel will help you swing to next to other platforms, but we can just skip all of that. Grabbing this Damascus here, which is another upgrade uh, material for Keyblades. And now I also made sure I... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Unequipped... Um, critical converter and put on magic ring so what I want to do here is grab a splash run this should do enough damage for it and then I'm going to oh no oh. Uh, auto <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. I <laughs> okay I guess I'll just continue and try again yeah I, I didn't expect a magic logic to just completely 180 Yeah, it's very un unusual that one of them is like charging directly at the, at the start. 
Yeah, well, so the idea here is that we're now putting these uh, form changes that we stored to use and we have this Rastful, Rastful Flurry ready on this counter shield and we have the Magic Launcher Finisher, this big AoE attacks. On top of that, uh, picking up that Splash Run, another big AoE attack to deal with these many power walls in here. And that's how it's supposed to look. Very quick fight. Uh, now moving on to Chaos Courage. Now we're going to bring out Ralph, the uh, <laughs> uh, let's just say a very powerful link or or summon or whatever you want to call it. So the idea is that uh, you build these blocks. They chain into each other. You you need to uh, uh, up oh oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, you want to no, first of all. <laughs> yeah, first of all, you want to stun this boss by uh, having this light point at the boss. But while it's doing an attack, yeah, it, it can't get stunned. So you're just gonna try to catch it <laughs> here. Okay. Okay. okay finally, okay. finally stop this uh, madman. Um, mm. So, so that block did not not get connected to the chain. Mm, well, now it is. But let's see how well this works. Uh, I think it's better if I just die. <laughs> yeah, yeah l let's try that again. So, uh, Shalph, uh, the idea is you build blocks, you you have, a, you start with a block, then you build a chain by building blocks into the light of the previous block, and then they explode in order. And all the explosions hurt enemies, and the bigger the chain currently is, the more the explosion will deal. So. In other words, for optimal damage, we want to have a big chain. Uh, the maximum is chain five. And we want all these explosions, or at least many of them, to hit the boss. Fortunately, this boss doesn't have like an insane amount of HP, so it, it's it's kind of forgiving. It, you don't need like super optimal shelf setups. But um, yeah, compared to other damage options we have on level one, this is just so much stronger. Yeah, uh, unfortunately in the first attempt, um, it just basically ignored the light. Chaos Carriage does have this thing where it can just run through and basically ignore all the structures you put up. But looks like it's behaving well now. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, the, the boss uh, likes to have like a random amount of attacks it does in the show. So sometimes you think it's done, and then it goes again. Uh, but, you know, we, we did catch him finishing the fight here. Uh, and now we have Super Jump, which is another form of movement so basically you just wall kick and you can just jump again useful for changing the uh, angles of your uh, super slides or just getting up to higher platforms uh, i'm gonna grab this high ether chest going to be saving it for much later uh, but for now we're just making it to the town Air step movement. And uh, there's not really much to say here, so I guess we have time for another donation. Hello and good morning. Ben Jury's checking in. Thank you so much to Pretty Tony for his previous uh, excellent work on the desk. Very excited to be joining uh, what is already a really enjoyable Kingdom Hearts run. Uh, got a couple of donations for you. Uh, one from Game Man for $25 that says, Yida, congratulations on getting into ESA and showing off the category you've worked so hard to improve. I'm super proud of you, and so are the rest of the big boys. Uh, we're all rooting for you. And uh, another donation, uh, this time from Violin for $50, that says, Hey Yida, Dips and Deno, it's really exciting to see you guys showcasing KH3 at ESA. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, both of you, for those very generous donations. And good morning, everyone. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, 
what am I doing? I'm not doing anything. <laughs> um, yeah, we have the best mini game ever. <laughs> this is Melody of Memories before Melody of Memories. Yeah, let's get some uh, hype for Kingdom Hearts shit in mini games. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, in short, what, what, what Yida is doing here is, uh, is approaching these uh, people. They either have a blue circle or a red circle, so he needs to either press circle or X accordingly. And when he builds up the score enough, or that um, gauge on the top left, then we can enable this uh, sun wheel uh, situation command. And you have more red circles, blue circles, but you can actually just mash buttons. Uh, you don't need to time it. It's, it's, yeah. Dancing. Just mash. <clears throat> yeah, there's not really much to say. Um, we we want to do these, uh, I guess, attractions, <laughs> just to get some extra points. But you can only do them after a certain amount of uh, dancing with other people. And this should get us the final dance, yep. Or the final circle, rather. So we don't we don't really get to see it much, but um, uh, actually in the background, there's uh, D Donald and Goofy dancing. That they are actually dancing very, uh, very nicely. I, I I I love it very much. Maybe we can catch a glimpse. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Or you're just going to have to find out to yourself <laughs> by playing the game. We get another magic boost from uh, completing the dance mini game. Uh, we won't be using it now. But we have to beat this fight first to use it. Um, so the thing about this fight is we did turn off a uh, critical converter. So we do have to be mindful with. Uh, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> we do have to be mindful about uh, getting physical hits in there to actually have a chance of getting the form now. Uh, that's bad. I wanted to attack into it to parry and stop the Beyblade attack, but that works too. Um, I want to get partial shot locks in there to kill them. Mostly to manage my MP, but... Also, if I would stop missing... Oh, that came in. <laughs> That's bad as well. <laughs> Alright. Hopefully this will take care of it. Alright, and now we just want to build uh, the magic launcher. And once again, use the shots to blow up all these dusks. And as we're doing all this damage, we want to get the attraction as well. There it is. If I can hit it, please. And then once we hit the final wave of these dusks, I will use the finisher. And then go to the middle. And hopefully the carousel will take care of the Reapers. If not, um, I am in MP recharge, so by the time this ends, I should hopefully have MP back to clear off the rest of them. Um, it looks like they're spinning around. They're not actually iframed while they're spinning, so you can't still hit them with this. There we go. Three of them? Okay, that's actually a lot. <laughs> a little scary. Okay. Yeah, that was good. Keeping the Reapers in check with those actually accurate fires <coughs> so uh, oh, oh sorry <laughs> uh, well, well, I, I do want to clarify something about the uh getting the form changes uh like what you was saying uh, like you, you need to do physical attacks to get a form change if you don't have a critical converter on if you do have it on just whatever you do to build up your situation gauge you will get the form change but if you don't have it on then you need to do at least one physical attack uh, to have a chance at getting it. But for every grand magic you get, it lowers your chance of getting a form change. So it's, it's, it's this RNG-based system. 
so now we're just making our way to the big boss of this world. Um, and while we're doing this movement, uh, I guess we have more time for some donations. More than happy to hop in here because we have an anonymous $100 donation. Thank you very much, anonymous. Uh, the comment says, goal get. Let's get that $100,000 goal and then even go beyond. Make this the year we game over Alzheimer's, something that I could not agree with more. Uh, that goes towards the uh, uh, Pokemon Sword speedrun that we've got coming up uh, later this morning with the wonderful Jordan 97. Uh, put that towards the uh, incentive to make sure that we get Urshifu because uh, at the moment Jordan's planning on leaving the beloved bear behind. So if you want to see, uh, if you want to see Cub through, go through the trials just as Game Freak intended, then you can put your donations towards that. So now there's a pretty big uh, fight coming. Uh, the you, you could say easily the tankiest boss we've faced so far, but we're going to unleash Ralph's full potential. And uh, yeah, we're going to build this, um, I explain how there's like these chains. So uh, we're going to use this upwards facing block and then build this tower where we also use these downwards facing blocks to make this kind of upwards tower. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really close. Uh, it is. It is level one, and uh, it's a lot easier on other categories. But um, yeah, that was that was pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, on level one crit, getting a one shot is a bit. Um, it's 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 definitely not a given. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, do you even get? One shots on level one, you can, uh, but you have to have the right blocks, and I mean yeah. the right blocks. Yeah, so so that that was definitely excellent damage, very good fight. So yeah, the <laughs> yeah you you can expect some insane things from Ralph in this run. Um, so now we are revisiting the town, and. We couldn't go here because uh, we had the trigger for the dance mini game, but now, oh, sorry, ladies. Um, <laughs> we just have to uh, grab this chest here. Uh, those people would block it uh, unless we do that small barrel attraction thing, uh, which is it's another magic boost. Um, we're also going to be upgrading our new Keyblade Ever After, which is um, the most broken thing ever. Yeah. And we, we did have the materials to upgrade it, so uh, hooray to OK RNG instead of completely terrible. <laughs> Equipping refocuses for the next fight as well. And using the magic boost. So now our magic stat is high enough to go back to the boss of uh, this world. But not only magic stat, but ever after shot lock. Uh, difference between this shot lock and the previous ones is that um, this is attribute that a lot of shot locks have that it, it just makes them deal half the damage to bosses but ever after shot lock doesn't have that on top of that it just has a high damage multiplier it's just it's just a lot of damage so now we put those refocusers to use and we just use a lot of the shot lock and just look at the HP bar absolutely destroys it um okay so it's doing the rocket moves this is pretty bad because um it it's sort of hard to throw the items and aim another shot lock in between them and hopefully they don't hit me also those rockets actually hit pretty hard i think we can get like two shot by them yeah not the greatest pattern right now but it's doing its uh yeah, it's doing its DM right now. <laughs> but two more shot locks should do it. Yeah, you have to mine these obstacles a little bit. They can get in the way of your shot lock. Uh, it didn't give it too much trouble this time. Uh, relatively clean fight. Yeah, it's pretty hard to optimize this fight. Um, you got to be careful with obstacles. you got to be able to actually uh, not be too far away from it. 
if you're too far away from enemies, you actually can't really get the ticks for the shot lock, or you lose a lot more focus than you should. So now we're heading to mid game. Um, this is where the run, I'd say, becomes easier. Uh, beginning game just doesn't really have access to a lot of tools, but now that we have Ever After, um, things do go smooth here. I'd say the run in general is kind of one of those that get easier as the run goes on. Um, but now we have another gummy section. We're taking a detour here to grab uh, a really powerful uh, gummy mission from a constellation, but while we're doing that, uh, we have time for donations. You have timed that well, because we have just had a, a $10 anonymous donation come in. Uh, there's no comment on that, but uh, it doesn't matter anyway, because uh, it is greatly received. And again, they've put that uh, towards the uh, Get Urshifu incentive for uh, Pokemon Sword coming up later today. Thank you very much. Time to squeeze in something else as well? Uh, yeah, it's... A long section right now. <laughs> such are such are the gummy ship sections. Uh, obviously, uh, everyone who's donating to uh, to ESA, including that uh, anonymous donator, uh, get can get entered into uh, some of the wonderful prizes we've got on offer. Uh, pertinent ones at the moment uh, for a thirty dollar minimum donation, you can be entered into the. Uh, into the draw to win the Kingdom Hearts 3 Deluxe Edition for uh, PlayStation 4 uh, and that closes in uh, a couple of hours after this run and as well as that with that $10 donation uh, they were entered into a win the Hat in Time acrylic scene which is absolutely gorgeous and that's open through Cygnus's uh, Hat in Time run which comes up uh, after this. Uh, so we did now get the Endymion, the uh, ship, uh, the gummy ship we're going to use for the rest of the run. You might already see that it's just immensely faster than what we had before. And just on top of that, like base faster speed, we also regenerate the boosts uh, faster, so we can just boost more. And uh, we do have another uh, gummy boss here, and same deal. Bring up the camera and we just go right past it. Endymion, I believe, is the fastest gummy ship in the game. Yeah. Alright, so now we have uh, Monsters Inc. And this is where we use Ralph quite a lot. Now, this is basically where the run becomes Ralph Descent, essentially. Yeah, I think it's actually used in each and every single fight in this world. Pretty much. Uh, so, the reason why we're using Ralph is because these toads are pretty hard to take care of. Um, so we just want to build these blocks and hopefully take care of the toad. Some of the flood survived. Um, shot locking is the best way to clear them. Hopefully they don't go underground. Nice. Good. So, these enemies uh, are unversed, which is just basically not heartless um and one of the worst things about this world is those floods that i just had to shot lock on um they are annoying because they go underground and you can't do anything you can't really do much to bring them up uh i guess summoning can force them to come out but it's not ideal most of the time yeah, you could theoretically cast water on them, but it's not, like I said, it's not optimal for our strats. So, meowing here. And then we're just gonna partial shot lock all of these. Hopefully, that clears them all. Oh, one of them's alive. Okay. And then I'm just going to Ralph these two toads here. And then hopefully, the floods will just follow and get trapped in the lights as well and should hopefully one-shot everything. Um, that toad isn't 
going to get one shot, so I need to move him to the later chains. Nice. So that's the ideal fight. Yeah, the, the thing with Trinalop is that not only can it deal massive damage to a single target, also if you make these setups, these, all these small enemies tend to just get stuck in the uh, lights that, that freeze enemies, and you know, the, then it just blows up the whole fight, regardless of <laughs> how much HP they even have, like all these tanky enemies, they all, they all just die. Yeah, thankfully the floods are like fairly aggressive, they wanna hit you, that's why they come closer and then they're getting caught in the lights of half, which is pretty nice. So another benefit of running on crit is we have errors, uh, sorry, not airslide, super slide level three, um, which actually affects the super slide on these rail sections. So we are moving a lot faster than other categories. Um, and normally the game wants you to press triangle to hang on to the door that's underneath you and dodge the lightning, but we can actually just super slide through them. For this fight, uh, we're going to meow meow immediately, and now we're going to just spam buzz saws and try and get Mirage Staff. Yeah, stepping to flying enemies can get buzz saws really easily. So, so Mirage Staff is the form change of Ever After. And uh, it has some two ways of stacking. Yeah, you can just do this like straight uh, melee attacks, or if you dash around, then it creates these clones. And if these clones are out, then then if you press attack, then you and all your clones will attack your targets. And that is something we will see a lot, because it, it builds the situation gauge very quickly. And another benefit that Ever After has is that it has the Erosa ability, which uh, by itself gives a 15% chance to just get Erosa when we build Situation Gauge without even using any arrow. Um, and it indeed turns all our arrow Grand Magics into Erosa, which is it's a very powerful um, AoE magic. Getting Erosa is RNG, but really nice when you get one. Ooh, got another one again. Uh, and I should finish the fight here. So the goal was to just fill up the lofty gauge. Um, that was a quick fight. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, sim simply killing enemies uh, fills the um, laughter gauge. We're going to see that mechanic uh, again in a fight later on. Th this was kind of an introduction, like, like an easier version. The harder fight is going to um, come later. Also, I forgot to equip those ethers in the earlier menu, so I just did them there. Uh, ju this is just another rail section and moving on to the next fight, and not really much to say here, so I guess we have time for another donation. Lovely stuff. Uh, of course, the reason we're here is to raise money for Alzheimer Fonden, which is the, uh, the Swedish fundraising organization that focuses on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-related diseases. Uh, it's the seventh leading cause of death in the world, Alzheimer's, and on average a person with Alzheimer's lives uh, only about four to eight years after diagnosis, but can live as long as 20 years. So the money that uh, ESA raises uh, through this event uh, helps to finance uh, various supports and uh, research into doing all we can to help uh, to help find out more and hopefully eventually stop this uh, stop a slightly debilitating disease in all honesty so everything that we raise all the donations uh anything you purchase from speed run store and as well as that uh uh bits and twitch subs uh during the event all go directly to alzheimer fondant so everything is greatly appreciated all right so now we're in the factory i believe yeah the factory um it has a lot of dangerous movement sections. Those guys could kill me right now with the HP I have. Um, and these stairs are horrible. They You can just sometimes wall kick them randomly. Um, but here is the first laser section and... Uh, uh oh. <laughs> you just want to air slide through them, but I got blocked there, so that was scary. 
Um, just making our way to the next fight now. That's the movement there. Yeah, getting hit by those lasers right now would just kill it um, right away. <laughs> so it's scary. Oh, whoops. Coming up is the electric room fight. It's kind of a tight space and the walls are um, like electrified. If you touch them, you uh, take damage. Uh, we're going to use shout again against these toads. Hopefully catch some of these uh, flying enemies uh, into it as well. Oh yeah, there's this little sound glitch going on sometimes that you can't hear that you're in critical HP range. Uh, I am 1 HP, so I'm just going to do a partial shot lock. Okay, that <laughs> that's not a partial shot lock. Oh, well, Dono healed me, so that's fine, too. Uh, but yeah, I just want to use shot lock now to clear out the last of these enemies. That was a good fight. Yeah, as, as much as we have already talked about how useful Ever After is, it also has the, like, if, if you don't fully charge the shot lock, um, it, it will heal you. So so that can be used in a, in a tight spot to um, make sure you don't die. Just made it through the second laser section. And now we're just gonna tense because we don't want to go into the next fight with nothing. <clears throat> so this is the second uh, laugh fight and this is the longest fight in this world. Um, not the greatest blocks, but what we want to do here is Ralph the Toad. I... okay, that barely got it. Hopefully that will catch some of the small enemies. Oh. Oh. Come back, please. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the spider toad, toad is so big that you cannot push it. Mm. So we couldn't really um, change the position of it. Maybe it's better to just take a death. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm gonna continue just to get the form back. I don't want to lose the form or uh, have to rebuild it again because it is annoying to deal with small enemies without it. Okay. Yeah, the thing with the Ralph blocks freezing enemies is that you need to make sure the uh, coverage is, is good uh, on the enemy. Like if the light only just barely touches the enemy or well, the the part of the enemy that actually makes it get frozen. Um, it, the, the enemies can sort of twitch a little bit uh, and uh, then and end up breaking out of the freeze state and you want to avoid that. Got a Rosa, which is very nice. Just good AoE on this wave. Um, so the idea of this fight is you're just getting repeated waves over and over, but um, okay, we got a Rosa and a Flood that's underground. There you go, that's a showcase of how annoying they can be. Um, we have Pirate Chip now, um, so I'm just going to go close to the Toad and use the finisher and take a lot of HP away from it and then just shot lock it once. It should kill it. And now in this last wave, we just uh, Meow Meow finish to get them all to half HP, and then just clone spam. But yeah, in general, I'm trying to be as efficient uh, as possible with my ethers. I don't want to use them when it's not necessary. Ooh, nice Erosa. Also, my form is about to run out, so I have to make sure I build up as much arrows as I can to keep it up. Okay, just managed to keep it barely. Um, yeah, that was a good laugh to fight. Got a lot of Eroses there. Um, so we're just heading to the next section and there's not really much going on right now, so I guess we have more time for donations. 
Lovely. Just going to draw attention to uh, what we've got coming up uh, during the rest of the day. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, after this, we've got uh, Cygnus, uh, who I'm sure is going to absolutely smash a hat in time for you. Uh, and then it's a, it's a really eclectic day. Uh, we've got the Dora the Explorer run, which is going to be... Uh, Honestly, something that I don't think I'm quite ready for. Uh, Jordan 97's running Pokemon Sword. Uh, and other runs that, are, uh, that particularly catch my eye. Looking forward to Insert Logic running Kenna Bridge of Spirits later in the uh, afternoon. There's the Geo Guesser run, uh, Airplane Mode. And there is also coming up uh, late tomorrow evening the uh, Step Mania run, which is going to be just honest bananas level of skill and there are a few incentives open for that as well uh, we've already met the here comes plum bonus song incentive which is great uh, the frame perfect bonus song is uh, 125 dollars out of a thousand and as well as that there's the potential to have a euro beat marathon in the step mania showcase as well that's currently at 380 dollars out of 1000 so <laughs> Normally you don't get splash run in that fight. I got really lucky to have it at the start, but um, yeah, I, I, if you if you're at the right position, you can hit all four of those last flame cores in the last wave, and just leave them with one, one HP left. That was a very good fight. But um, otherwise, I would be using water on them just to clear them all. So now, more movement. Um, I am pretty low on Mirage stuff, so I have to be careful in the next fight. Um, but you can uh, rebuild the forms as you go into summons. So I'll be using a few Mammals here and there. But almost there. This is one of those uh, long dives, but we're not going to drop all the way. We're just going to go here and grab an Ether Chest. And since I'm already full uh, MP and HP and focus, I can just go straight to the fight without touching the save point. So I'm going to start off here with a shot lock and get them all to one shot range for a Meow Meow finisher. Okay, those fire scary. Um, and that's going to grab the MP orbs from the enemies as well as the MP orbs from here. And I'm just going to Ralph and hopefully take care of the majority of the uh, flame cores and the two large bodies that are here. I'm just going to move this one closer. Okay, I got that one. One of the flame cores will DM. Ralph just triggers it. Yep, there's a DMing one. And I'm just going to try and kill the remaining ones with partial shot locks. There we go. We would like to use partial shot locks if it is enough. The animation for that attack is just uh, significantly faster than the full shot lock. But also, all that damage will be dealt at once. So in case of flame cores, using the full shot lock, just dealing one hit at a time, could lead to a situation where they use the DM uh, attack um, halfway in and then stop taking damage. All right, once again, we're ralphing this toad. Um, hopefully we catch all those small enemies as well in here. We have two triple blocks, which is great for AoE. I think that's all of them. I like that looks amazing. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> two of them? OK. But whatever, <laughs> that one shot them anyways. And that's uh, the last toad we have to fight. Now we're going to the big boss of this world. Mm, we still see the toad once more. Way later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's <laughs> true. True. Uh, so unlike Toy Box, we don't really have a reason to leave and come back later. We already have all the tools we need uh, and want to deal with this boss. That is mainly the clones of Mirage Staff and Ralph. So, uh, Lump of Horror is very resistant to all damage during his first phase. Uh, and these clones, they 
they may deal very little damage, but just the sheer amount of hits we deal is the reason it ends up dealing pretty okay damage. And something we're looking for here is for uh, Mike, our, our party member there, to use an ability that buffs, um, buffs the party's damage. Um, if he uses that, then the damage of those clones will effectively double. Because right, uh, normally they would just deal one damage per hit. But now the buff is active and all those hits will deal two damage per hit. Because, no, you know, it's just the damage buff isn't like two times, but it's rounded up. So that's why it's actually just dealing double damage. And it, it's a huge difference. Now transitioning to the second phase, we bring out Ralph. The boss is going to be stationary in this very spot, so we can just easily set this up uh, on the boss's face and just blow it up. Nice. Very good fight. So yeah, the, the idea is to make it transition to, the, transition to the second phase as fast as possible, to start using Ralph as soon as possible. Um, a, a bit unfortunate there. Uh, we couldn't get it to the corner. The corner uh, where I was just hovering and kind of hugging is uh, so that when it starts shooting fireballs, it just kind of goes out of bounds and it can't really touch me anyways. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it started doing those uh, homing fires that I had to guard. Otherwise, it would completely destroy me. Uh, so now we're heading to the next world uh, and we have time for more donations. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but as well as uh, donating via the link you can find uh, beneath the uh, beneath the stream, then there are also other ways of uh, getting involved in raising money for Alzheimer Fondon. Uh, any products that you buy from uh, Speedrun Store, the profits from that this week all go towards all go towards Alzheimer Fonda, as do Twitch bits and subs. And so, if you are like me, and for example, you've got a spare Prime Gaming sub knocking around that you haven't used, uh, you can use that here. And it will, uh, yeah, help to raise money for Alzheimer Fondant in the process as well. Mm, oh, we did um, get a new Keyblade from Monstropolis. Um, we're not going to use it now. We're going to use it at pretty much the end of the game. But... Um, yeah, yeah, it's useful there, it's now useful now, but uh, moving on to Arundel, we have a um, little bit of movement, going to try to get some air slide chaining and uh, air stepping to some enemies in distance. So what we're approaching is actually a very, very uh, tricky fight that we've been, um, we've been uh, working on recently to figure some... Uh, things out. It's um, another shelf setup, but uh, it's going to be used on Frog Troll, uh, um, an enemy that we faced in uh, back in Olympus Coliseum, where we had the tutorial on the attractions. Um, so those enemies have a really tricky hitbox on how to freeze them with Ralph. So it's really difficult to get the setup so that the Frog Troll actually gets frozen and th then that allows us to get the setup uh, also, annoyingly enough, uh, this version of the Rock Tour actually can go into an armored state. Uh, okay, so the bad thing about Rock Troll is it can just randomly leave the light. That's bad. Uh, okay, it's changed. <laughs> so you have to aim the light at a very specific point in its head. Hopefully this is good damage. Nope, it's not really. I'm gonna go for a second round then. Okay. Please stun it. No. Please stun it. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> it's armor. Yeah, okay, that's so the armor phase. Yeah. I'm gonna just. Sh uh, maybe I'll take a death here. I'll try and get a better wrath next time. You do want triple blocks because it is the easiest way to capture it. Uh, it's just the biggest uh, range you can get. Also, one more thing to mention why we didn't want to continue with more setups is that 
Rife just doesn't deal a lot of damage to the armor. Okay, triple block. And it's walking away. <laughs> no! Oh. You gotta catch it at the right time as well. While it's idling. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you ca you have a very uh, you have limited blocks as well. So if you build too many far away and you can't chain them, then uh, you can't really do anything. You kind of have to just start again. Yeah, it's not an understatement to say that this is one of the hardest fights when it comes to war execution. Okay, try and get it. I think that's secure now. That looks good. Yeah. You also want to be a little bit careful where you place your blocks. It might end up pushing Proctrol away from your setup if you build too close. The uh, collision can be finicky. But that ended up being really good damage. That wa that's what we want to see. So finish it up with uh, shot block. Also some of these smaller enemies we still need to deal with. This is the uh, first use of Simba uh, in the run. So very um, straightforward AOE damage. We can just jump on all these enemies. Um, just quick and easy job against those. Yeah, definitely one of the worst fights in the run with how inconsistent catching it with Ralph is. Yeah, just many RNG factors. The blocks you get, the movement of the proc troll like, like it's, it's just yeah, you need to react so quickly and it, it's just in, in so many ways it's, it's just very um very, very difficult to get everything to line up uh so for the ice labyrinths we have a series of fights against this uh, ninja enemies uh these enemies are weak to water so we use simba on them yeah, so <laughs> they are weak to water, but we don't have good water damage. But Simba is good AoE. Um, we want to get them low enough to the point where finish would one-shot all of them, but the unfortunate thing about Simba is the finish range is pretty small. Uh, okay, so that one just had too much HP. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> oh. Hey, you see that little spinning attack? right there that's like a unique t a unique property that ninjas have when there are only like two of them left and if they take enough damage they can use that attack as some retaliation and while they do that during the wind up they're actually iframed so you want to time your shot locks if you want to well if you have to do some cleanup and yeah we we have to fight ninjas four different times Pretty much the same thing over and over. <laughs> but I do want to keep uh, my focus in check. If I am too low on focus, then I do want to tempt. Otherwise, if uh, there are surviving ninjas in the next fight, then I won't really have a good way to deal with them. Uh, these guys look like they're low enough, so hopefully this should one-shot them all. Nice. nice. We have Thundara here. We don't ever use Thundara, <laughs> unfortunately. It's not really a good spot for it. Still mostly spamming links. Uh, we're leaving the world map here. Uh, we're leaving uh, the world here and going to the world map and going back actually just instantly puts the uh, sliding walls in place. Uh, on the PC version, they actually move a lot slower, so it's just faster to go in and out. Especially... Uh, for the load times as well, it actually saves a lot of loadness. Um, not really much to say about this next fight again, it's the same thing, so we have time for more donations. Yeah, I got a couple of lovely donations here. Uh, the first is a $25 donation from Swift Shadow that says, Yida, congratulations again on getting to show this game off at ESA. So happy to see Critical Level 1 get its time in the spotlight. Uh, good luck with the rest of the run. You've been amazing so far. Sentiments that I fully agree with. And thank you, Swift Shadow, as well, for putting the, 
uh, donation towards the uh, Get Urshifu incentive. And uh, the next one is an anonymous donation, but it is still greatly received. Uh, a $200 donation uh, with the comment simply, uh, good luck. <laughs> and uh, yeah, at the moment you've been smashing it. So uh, yeah, I'm sure you will continue to do so. Thank you. Love you, Swift. Okay, that almost got blocked there. Um, this is the last ninja fights. Uh, all of the other ones had only six of them. Now we have eight. Which is a little more troubling, but hopefully I can still one-shot them all. Looks like I'm keeping them close together. Hopefully. There's always one. <laughs> Alright, there we go. So that's Labyrinth done. Um, my focus isn't full, which is a little bit worrying for the next fight, but I do get some focus orbs back on the way, so it should be almost full. I don't think it matters too much. But now we got to eat food again. And the whole idea of Arendelle is we climb the mountain and then we drop down the mountain and we climb up the mountain again. This is, uh, I believe, the second time we're climbing up again. But movement in this uh, world is really cool. We're going to grab this uh, chest here, which is an elixir. Elixir is important for an un uh, upcoming fight for this world. For now, we're making our way to a pretty dangerous auto scroller. Um, there are ways to make it safer. Um, I equipped uh, specific armors like a petite ribbon, which does decrease uh, blizzard damage. Um, as you'll see, uh, these uh, frost serpents, which are like these flying dragon things, they deal uh, blizzard damage with these ice beams. If I didn't have Petite Ribbon, then it would two-shot me, but with the Petite Ribbon, it changes it to a three-shot, which doesn't seem like a big difference, but I would honestly take tanking one more hit. Yeah, for, for a lot of people, well, when they first played this on critical mode, uh, might have taken a death or two uh, to this section. It, it's just very easy for this to go south very fast you get hit by one beam and then another and then it slows you down and then the avalanche beam on you catches you and starts dealing damage and even the uh, frost serpents on the ground can uh, just sort of physically hit you the, the hitbox is kind of weird but uh, you know <laughs> usually you should be able to avoid that from happening yeah it's very rare to get hit by them mm. and as the slide progresses uh, more of them start going into the air. Yeah, the key to make this as easy as possible is to just move as uh, little as possible by trying to anticipate where the next attack is going to land. Oh, okay. If I had a Koopa coin, um, have we explained what a Koopa coin does yet? No, I don't believe. We have so yeah. the coupon coin is uh, something you can buy from a mobile shop. That uh, essentially, if your HP falls to zero, it uh, brings you back to life with uh, some HP. Uh, is it full? Yeah, yeah, full HP, and then uh, it acts like as an ether, essentially giving you some uh, MP back. But yeah, um, I managed to no damage. It's not really hard to do uh, after running crit a lot um but yeah that's the reason why i didn't buy a Cooper coin uh i do feel confident enough to do it but i will be buying Cooper coin later on because it does have some uses to uh like dan said restore my ether which uh for certain fights where i don't really have enough ethers it is pretty much required but for now we're just on this uh frozen slider section we're just generally following money, but also kind of going 
uh, the straightest line possible to the next fight. Um, but yeah, these money orbs aren't a lot. They're five money each, and overall we're getting around two and a half ethers maybe from all this money. Yeah, yeah. You were gonna showcase what happens if you hit trees and uh, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> right? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you if you uh, run into a wall or something. On crit, you take around half your health, so <laughs> it's really scary. Yeah, like, uh, as much as this is like a, you know, just a, like fun little mini game, you just uh, I know hit a bad spot, you just get hit multiple times and you die. <laughs> it can be pretty funny. And now, now we fight these frost serpents for real and. Uh, and uh, Simba turns out to be very useful with this uh, Pyraga Shore, just sort of hitting all of them, at least um, until they spread apart a little bit. And uh, kind of a weird thing about Simba is that it, it seems to just break one of their wings. When you break both of their wings, they go underground, and then they have a different sort of moveset. But uh, for now, they all seem to still be in air. Oh, I didn't hit any of them with a the finish. That's oh. unlucky. Yeah. Mm. And that one's too high, I think. Okay, you're just going on the ground. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see, every roar I do with Simba does stun them. Um, fi any fire uh, damage does just instantly stun them. And Simba just happens to be fire. Okay, hopefully this hits all of them. If not, uh, I'm just going to shot lock the remaining ones. Yeah, the finisher even leaves this uh, sort of area of um, hot ground, which is also fire damage, just continuously dealing damage to enemies within that area. That also stuns them and uh, can be very useful, keeping them in place, dealing a little bit of damage in the process. Okay. Pretty good fight. <coughs> and we just got double flight. Uh, I won't be equipping that yet. I'll be equipping it in uh, a menu where I can do a lot of stuff. Um, but for now, um, we are going to this mini game that a lot of people dislike, actually. <laughs> uh, collecting Olaf pieces. Yeah, in in this speedrun, it's a very fast thing. That there are fake parts around this area, but you. The right parts are always in the right place, so just uh, fear slides and we already have them all. And uh, then it's going to lead into another uh, mob fight, some small enemies. Uh, we'll be uh, seeing some more uh, Simba once again. Also, those legs not catching them in time is like really scary. It's wasting a lot of time. Yeah, They're just sliding on the ice there. <laughs> There's a, sp a specific setup we do to just catch it immediately. Otherwise, you just uh, uh, slide around forever and you can't catch it. Uh, so Simba, hopefully this will catch all four of those satyrs. It did. Mm. I have had so many runs where one of them would just run away and never come close. So. <laughs> This is a good change for once. And then the finisher should hopefully one-shot everything. Uh, those deers just kind of run into you, and that's the fight. It's very easy. So we have our third and final accessory slot, and this is where um, uh, we're going to equip uh, an accessory called uh, Laughter Pin. It's just extra magic, really. Uh, nothing too special. We will change it very soon. And double flight. We have... A pretty big movement section here. Uh, once again, we're just climbing up the mountain back to Elsa's palace. Um, so not much going on here, so we have time for another, uh, for more donations. Super, thank you very much. Uh, another donation here from uh, B-Boy for $25 that says, uh, GL on the run, Yida. It's been a blast running KH3 alongside you the past few years. Here's to many more. I'm so happy that level one critical is finally being is finally getting shown off by the goat himself. 
you got this. And uh, that donation goes towards uh, the Eurobeat Marathon for uh, the Step Mania showcase coming up uh, later tomorrow evening. Uh, huge shout out to the KH3 community. He seems to be uh, yeah, representing well even during the middle of the night here in Europe. Those large bodies can one shot you, by the way, so. <laughs> It's bad. If you die in the overworld, you get a continue instead of retries, and continues mean you start where you last auto save, and that would be right after the post Olaf fight. So we do not want to die there and go all the way back down. So uh, now we have Marshmallow fight, and um, uh, if, if, if you're in Twitch chat, feel free to post some uh, Wreck-It or, or uh, similar Ralph-related lines because we're going to Wreck-It. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just going to... Optimally, we just use Ralph. Might use some shot lock. Uh, it's okay. It's, I, yeah. Okay, <laughs> there we go. I just wanted to get a go against the wall because... Uh, there's this mechanic called Stagger Endurance. Long story short, it will make it fly far away in a direction I don't want it to. Um, this looks good. It's against the wall. Specifically, the third explosion uh, that hits Marshmallow will make him fly away. So we need to account for that and make sure it, it, it just doesn't fly out of our setup. No. No. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Marshmallow can enter the armored state with this much HP left. So yeah. what Edo was trying to go for was like trying to get rid of the armor by using our reprisal. Yeah, reprisals are uh, one of the fastest way to get rid of the armor. Uh, but you you just always want to catch Marshmallow over and over as much as you can. Um, so it it looks like it's gonna fly this way so i'm just gonna try and build a structure here and hopefully this will hit a, a bunch it's not next to a wall but it's next to that branch so hopefully it can kind of block it never mind that did nothing <laughs> um it is just barely out of reach i do want it to jump uh there we go Perfect. All right, now it's time for the kill. No pressure, by the way. This has to kill. <laughs> Shotlock should just take care of it. I'm gonna do a full shot lock here in case um, it armors. I don't want it to uh, do nothing. There we go. We did indeed uh, wreck it. Okay. <laughs> Been having a lot of deaths in this run. Um, so now we're grabbing Force Ring. One of the more important accessories, um, mainly because it's one of the higher magic stat accessories we, can have, we have access to, um, but it also has a special uh, ability called uh, Full MP Blast. So if you cast a spell uh, while you have Full MP, it deals 1.5 times more damage. Um, and it does add up a lot. Uh, it can even turn certain mob fights to being one shot by a spell. Really useful. Uh, just making our way to the next boss fight. So we have time for another donation. Uh, I want to look ahead to uh, the upcoming bid wars we've got going on at the moment. Uh, the next one on the schedule is the... Uh, Subble nickname for uh, the Pokemon Sword Tower of Two Fists speedruns. Uh, still 
a decent amount of time to to get this in. Uh, I think with an eye on the absolute carnage that was the uh, the Castlevania randomizer. Uh, in third place at the moment is R.I.P. Bobby with uh, sixty dollars. Uh, in second place is Bobette with eighty five dollars. Uh, but because uh, we're speedrunners and speedrunners love puns, uh, the current winning nickname is uh, James Pond with a hundred dollars. But there's still plenty of time to uh, change that, so you can uh, put your uh, put your donations to uh, the nickname of your choice, whether that be one of those or something else entirely. Okay, so as you can see, I'm using Simba to basically go through this very slow section. Otherwise, Sora would just kind of walk very slowly, um, and the wind would push you back. Oh, I, I'll, I'll uh, just die and <laughs> yeah. do them anyway. Also, we got very lucky that we got the magic boost from the synth shop. Like that we got enough synth stuff that we could actually get it. If we didn't get it, the next fight would just be way slower and the overall run from here. Yes, so here's the boss, but you know, we needed to uh, menu <laughs> before the boss. So since we didn't get a chance to do that, I accidentally uh. hit the trigger for the boss a little too early. Uh, we're just gonna have to take a test and... Uh, don't heal me, Donald. And attack me, please, go. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty passive at the start, unfortunately. Mm. Very soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can menu uh, from deaths, prepare and retry. Um, so we're just equipping the elixirs we have. So this is uh, just setting up for a Pretty big DM skip. Uh, wait, wait. Fire uh, elixir. Um, I don't need to tent there. So yeah, that's the setup. Yeah. So how this fight is gonna work is that you wanna open up with the ever after shot lock just to deal some damage while uh, a skull is just charging around the arena. But after that, we're going to uh, go into a loop from which we do not want the boss to break free at all and that is going to start with a fire finisher which will start a stagger and we follow up with another shot lock this will break the boss's stagger endurance which allows all of our magics to instantly stagger the boss for 10 seconds straight uh, the same applies for the shot lock uh, but now it's about to recover from that stagger break but now we use another shot lock and it's going to break the stagger endurance once again. And this is how we continue the loop. And we sustain this by uh, using those elixirs that we collected earlier. Okay, it's fine. Got it's it. Fine. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. A right, big, big clap for that one. <laughs> yeah, if one single fire misses, <laughs> it's over. Uh, it's pretty tight. You don't want it to. Uh, you don't want any fires to miss. And the the difficult thing about skull uh, is mostly aiming the shot lock. It, it moves around a lot as it's being staggered. Um, but I was at the right distance where, as its head is moving, I don't really have to move the aim the shot lock as much uh, and move it around. So I got consistent 28s there. Um, so now we are heading to what I like to call late mid game. Um, it... Sorry, I, ju I just need a menu. To... <laughs> so I'm equipping these refocusers uh, to get ready for. Uh, really annoying enemies where I can't really do much except for spamming shot locks on them. Yeah, another gummy mission, but it's a uh, really quick one, which is really close to it. Our ship is very fast and uh, we land to Caribbean. Yeah, once again making use of the waypoints that we got on the way to Endymion. So this is the Caribbean. Um, 
one of the more tiring worlds, I'd say. There are a lot of fights that are really stressful. Um, so we're going to start off here with a big movement. We're chasing a pirate ship, the Black Pearl. Um, so this is one of those moments where we make use of Blizzard movement again. So we're just going to pop it here. And then after a while, we're going to hit this in air slide and just pop another Blizzard. It's going to shoot cannons, and I get one shot by those, so I want to just quickly step back a little bit. And then now it's going to shoot cannons again. I step back with the Sonic Slash. <clears throat> so these guys are one of the scariest uh, enemies in the run. They one-shot you with every single attack. So I just want to kind of keep my distance and just shot lock them one by one. I don't want to mix them up. I want all the damage to go to just one of them. Also, I don't want to lose any focus as well. Alright, now I want to catch them both in the same shot lock. Nice, that's one of them gone. Just gonna use a high refocuser. And it's just two more shot locks on this last one. There we go. Yeah, if we didn't have all these refocuses, we wouldn't be able to do much. It's just, I don't know, Simba spam, but Simba spam's very slow there. Yeah, th there are a few, few alternatives here. One of them is to uh, build up a uh, counter shield uh, for the uh, second chance and which sand combo abilities it has. Uh, very useful in the upcoming fight, but it, it is a bit of a, a slow strategy to go for that compared to what Ida wants to do. <coughs> so. This is the introduction to uh, ships and ship combat. So this isn't the main ship we'll be using. This is the Black Pearl. We can't aim directly in front of the ship, unfortunately, but it does shoot a lot of cannons on the side. Uh, those ships are very uh, quick to kill. You just aim at the weak spots and then they're instantly dead. And now we have a very infamous fight, Raging Vulture. <laughs> yeah, everyone loves this fight. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's kind of a mini game fight. Uh, you fly on this um, Heartless, and yeah, you have these attack options of using torpedoes or burst shot. Um, the thing with torpedoes is that it's actually fire damage, and Yeda did uh, equip a fire cut link which has fire boost, and it does indeed increase uh, fire damage, or, or well, the torpedo damage. Um, and that then you might be thinking, um, like, what about our stats? Well, both of those attacks scale with your strength, but our strength is really low. However, they, they did fortunately, uh, in one of the patches to this game on the console version, make it so that you always have, like, a, like, like a damage floor that, that um, you always deal decent damage to this boss, even, even if your strength is low. Also, there's, uh, there are a few things to make this fight easier, or to make it a bit safer, like going for the nose dive that Ida is doing there, or doing an area dodge to the side that can parry incoming attacks. Yeah, and um, it has two different HP gates where it goes vulnerable like that. The game wants you to hop onto its back and do physical attacks on the head, but it's much faster to just keep using torpedoes over and over. The unfortunate thing about torpedoes is it does have a limited range, so if it's too far away, it's much better to just shoot normally. Uh, okay, I saw those rainbow guys coming. <laughs> yeah. scary. Every now and then, uh, at um, at least relatively steady in intervals, uh, a set of these enemies spawn uh, and they leave behind this like uh, these trails of different colors. We call them like the rainbow enemies or whatever. Uh, they move in a very specific way, so you just need to spot them uh, where they're coming from and uh, avoid it accordingly. I if you do uh, dodge sideways, oh, one of them in. then you have some iframes to uh, just go through those attacks. A little bit <laughs> scarier with HP, but we do still have a Koopa coin. 
Yeah, that's yeah. I buy a Cooper coin right before a skull to just have a safety net here. Um, hopefully, I won't need to use it though. Okay, so now it's targeting me, and it's a lot safer to just use the basic shots so that you can at least still dodge. You can't actually do dodge actions while you're using torpedoes. It just kind of locks you into that animation. Uh, I don't think it's targeting me anymore, so I can just go back to torpedoes again. Uh, but it's so far away, so <laughs> can't really torpedoes. I'll just do this. Yeah, fortunately, at least the small enemies drop some HP orbs, so... Uh, while he was at 1 HP earlier, now he's uh, back to at least some HP. So you can uh, use that to recover during the fight. But uh, that was good. D didn't die. That's uh, <laughs> it, that's definitely a, a very um, usual scenario that can happen that, that you die or at least lose your Koopa coin. Yeah, it's one of the big run killers. Yeah, also back in the days we had to make a specific a specific route to get 35 strength to actually deal yeah. decent damage before the custom damage floor was implemented there. I'm glad they did that. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we have an underwater section. Um, so right now we're just sort of uh, moving through here. We're picking up adamantite, uh, which is used for upgrading keyblades. Even further, uh, obviously we're going to use that on Ever After. It's just such a good keyblade. And we want every last magic point that we can get. So what we do is um, we're heading to the save point that's coming up here, right before the boss, and we go back to the Mogul, and we can upgrade the keyblade. Also, I did forget to mention, but um, y you do get uh, better food as you progress through the story. So uh, we're buying the next uh, set of foods now. I have a lot of beef as well. Um, I'm also going to upgrade Ever After. And now it's 10 magic. So yeah, every point of magic in this category is very important. We want to maximize the damage. Uh, so now we're just equipping ethers on Donald and Goofy as well. We want them to throw it uh, in the next fight. Uh, eat food. Oops. Yeah, with the upcoming fight, uh, it's going to be underwater combat. It's a little bit different from, from normal. It's um, a bit limited in what you can do. You, of course, have a physical combo that you can do. Um, you can still cast spells, but you don't have form changes, you don't have grand magic. Um, and all of your magic actually has the same damage multiplier when you're underwater. But since we have a fire boost with that fire coupling that boosts our fire damage, and also fire is just uh, takes the least amount of MP to cast. And we have actually a very specific setup that uh, we, we have 90 MP. So, um, I believe each fire is 10 MP, so we can use it 9 times, and then we are at 0 MP, but it doesn't go to MP free charge at that point. Instead, we can just get an Easter and uh, our MP is back to full, so this way we can maximize the amount of fires we can use. But still, we do need to offload some Easters to party members to make sure that we have enough MP to work with, to just keep using fire is easily the fast way to deal with this boss. Donald, you have an ether, throw it! <laughs> Donald! <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, they're both dead, so I have to do melee now. <laughs> Donald, no! He was really trying his best to get away from you. At least uh, it doesn't have too much HP. Um, melee is not too bad as well. You just dodge in between three hits, so you never get locked into a long finisher. And there's the fight. And now we have Thundaga, which is one of the main big spells that we're going to be using uh, for the rest of the run. <clears throat> that as well as Ariel, which is coming out of this box right here. Uh, a very useful link. Uh, that will see uh, 
well, yeah, you're you're going to see some interesting things uh, that that we're going to um, use that for. Yeah, she's pretty balanced. All right, and now we have our own ship, the Leviathan. Um, conveniently, right over here, we have a very powerful accessory called Celestriad. Um, so first, I'm just going to equip Favorite Deputy, which is the Toybox Keyblade. Um, changes the Rune Ring, and what is this again? Celestriad. Celestriad. Yep. Uh, and then, no, not that. Thundaga. <laughs> Thundaga. Uh, oh, that is not Thundaga. Um, and then yours to MP recharge uh, already. Customize AI. Hmm? Customize AI. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to turn everyone hands off. That is a very important thing. Okay, we're off. Uh, so we're heading to the Luxor Trace. Uh, you just need to take some, uh, or just go like any direction. But it so happens that going left, like just starting to go like around this island that we're on, uh, we just hit the trigger fastest going this way. Okay. So the reason why I killed two of the ships, uh, or more specifically shot the green orbs on them, is because shooting them builds up the blue gauge that is on the bottom left. And we get these commands that uh, gives us, uh, in this case, uh, like Tailwind, which is just for us to sail faster. Um, but in combat it gives us other special like combat moves. Or special attacks, rather. Um, so we just want to hopefully get tailwinds over and over. The type of command we get does depend on the color of the orb. So a green orb is tailwind. Um, if we see a blue orb, that is tidal wave. But it's not determined by whether you get it, uh, it uh, as the like building up all these uh, blue orbs or whatever. It's the last orb you hit to fill up the gauge, so even though I hit two blue orbs, if I hit a green one now, it's still going to be Tailwind. If I hit a blue one, then it's just going to be uh, a different one called Tidal Wave. Tailwinds, I do prefer to see... Okay, that's scary. I missed it. <laughs> well, I don't know how, but... <laughs> yeah, that... If you take out a ship, they have like a lingering hitbox. Which can push you out of the way, unfortunately. Alright, we are getting close. Yeah, also the uh, situation commands you get depends on the um, scenario you're in. So during that race, you have those tailwinds and uh, tidal waves. But now it's actually different. Now it's all like uh, offensive situation commands. Uh, there's no tailwind, there's instead wind chasers. Uh, there's still tidal wave, and now we can also get raging cannons. Uh, by breaking the sails on this uh, big ship that we need to destroy, it actually fills up our situation gauge bar a lot, and we just get all the situation commands at once, and we're going to use all of them at once to just deal a lot of damage to the ship very quickly. So here's Raging Cannons. This is by far the most damaging uh, special attack we can get. <laughs> Wind Chasers just is mostly AoE, just kind of homes into many enemies at once. But when it's just one big ship like this, uh, it is still a lot of damage. And of course, on crit, we do uh, less damage than beginners, so we aren't able to just uh, finish off the ship just like that. We have to do a few extra shots in. So th this is the Lux of Chip Fight. The first thing I'm going to do is just shot lock. Please get 28. Okay. And this is just two shot locks. Um, I'm scared. <laughs> and then for the rest of the fight, we are going to be using Thundagas. Yeah, the Celestriad we picked up earlier does have Thunder Boost, increasing our Thunder damage. Um, but even without his Thundaga, it's just, it's just the highest damage spell in the game. Also one nice thing to mention is that we can cause the Electrify status ailment, which is doing extra damage to any enemy that is getting electrified by it. And also while they are electrified, they cannot attack, except for water course. 
for the last remaining anchor traders, we uh, take out Daryl. Uh, this part is a little finicky, which is sort of, sort of um, want them to attack us, and then they get hit by a lot of these projectiles very quickly. Right. Yeah, 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 it's just what we just hope to see good patterns from the enemies. All right, we just wanted to stay close, and it just shreds them. <laughs> All right, so now that we uh, beat Luxor, uh ship, we are now in Port Royal. And our ship is broken, so we have to fix it by collecting crabs. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I'm just going to tent here uh, to refill my focus gauge. And then we're going to be doing a different route uh, than normal. So most people would think, oh, we just have to collect 300 crabs. Here, we can actually level up our ship to level 3 by collecting 500 of them. Um, and there is a specific different path we have to take for it. Uh, we're kind of going around the town as well to grab some extra crabs that we otherwise wouldn't. In the waterfall here, we have Sorcerer's Ring, which is one of the most important accessories in the run. It is the highest magic stat we have for an accessory. Uh, gonna shot lock these two barrels to destroy them. And then go here. Trinity Sled. So Trinity Sled has this property that just uh, grabs all the crabs for you. It's basically crab magnet or whatever. And now we go to jail. <laughs> yeah, not, none of our uh, like, not, none of the other treasure magnet or, or any of those, none of them uh, affect uh, these crabs. But Trinity, Trinity Sledge just grabs everything, um, at least from a very large radius. Uh, but here's uh, here's the so-called KBM crab snatcher, <laughs> uh, made by uh, one of the runners of the category back in the day. Just use uh, favorite deputy shot lock on those and uh, conveniently destroys them and collects them from a safe distance. Those anchor freighters can be very scary uh, if you get too close. And the waterfall should give us 60 more or 50 more. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, all right, 500. Yeah, if you hit 500, this section just ends. Yeah, you cannot get any more than that. But that is exactly what we need, as level 3 will give our ship surge, allowing us to move much faster, while also increasing the damage. Uh, oh, yeah, so we're going to equip Sorcerer's uh, Ring and uh, Slayer's Earring. We just want to maximize the the magic set we have. And a high ether to make the following boss easier as well. So now we have a pretty big sail. Uh, we're basically going towards the boss, but um, we're also going to be stopping at uh, a certain small island to grab another important accessory. Uh, this island right here. The yin yang cufflink. Yeah, yin yang is kind of the. You, you could say. How do you go? Like, like, like a, like a, like a brother of Celestia. The mm. <laughs> 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 Celestia, the, it has fire boost, thunder boost, and blizzard boost. Yin yang has arrow boost, water boost. Did he have a third ability? I'm MP haste. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, water boost and arrow boost, they're actually both going to be very useful. Water boost, especially for using aerial because it's water damage. And uh, it's just going to increase the damage by a lot. So, 
uh, you might have noticed that I was just doing a bunch of, uh, uh, like, accelerations as I was sailing. That's because I got level 3. I didn't kill that one, did I? I didn't. Okay. <laughs> um, it gives me this ability called Surge, and it's essentially infinite tailwinds. I can just uh, uh, sail super fast as long as I press circle. And it's really useful uh, in this fight because sometimes they are just far away and I just need to get close and try and hit their orbs. Uh, but level 3 ship also increases the amount of cannons we shoot, essentially increasing our damage. Uh, oh, I didn't hit that one. Okay. Um, so on crit, in particular, it does make a lot of the fights easier. You can die very easily. Um, so what do we want? We just want to kill them uh quickly as well to not die <laughs> um, it also helps us build uh, the special gauge faster because the more cannons that actually hit enemies the more uh, hits that count and build up um, so we have the final ship here we have raging cannons our goal is to hit every single red orb to kill it instantly um, but we want to kill one of the red orbs with the regular cannons to get a second raging cannon and finish off the ship. It's perfect. And now we are making our way to the last section of this world. Also, one small detail that you may have missed, Ida was dipping into the water for a short bit to lose our form. We don't want to be a Mirage star for the next fight. Yeah, uh, right before I went back onto the ship. Um, so now this is the Kraken. The whole goal here is to just build Raging Cannons as quick as possible. Um, you can do that by shooting at the Kraken itself, or once the Flying Dutchman shows up, you just shoot the Red Orb. There we go, we got the first Raging Cannons, but it's also blocking the way. Okay, and it's the main way to get rid of these tentacles. Uh, you just kind of want to shoot at them with Raging Cannons and then just aim at the middle. Okay, that's really far away. Hopefully I can hit this one. There we go. Good snipe. Yeah, so something a lot of people don't realize about this fight is that you can actually control the speed of your ship. You can see it on the uh, bottom right. So with the left thumbstick, you can uh, like tilt it up or down to control your speed, so that allows you to manipulate your positioning uh, in relation to those tentacles potentially blocking your shots. So it allows us to find those openings and, and stay on those openings for longer. So now it's the um, Davy Jones fight, and we're going to attempt something we call the uh, fish food skip. Uh, which uh, in involves uh, softening the boss a little bit with this uh, shot lock, um, or two shot locks, and then guess what link we're going to use to deal a lot of damage to a boss? Who could it be? <laughs> nice. Hmm. Mm. I don't like these blocks, but uh. All right. You can do it. Uh, yeah, you kind of have to think a lot about these different blocks every time. A uh, little trick Yida did there is he did um, throw a high ether right before using the first valve. So that way his MP was full at the end of that uh, finisher and now he just went into another shelf straight away um, attempting to finish this fight without seeing any more moves from the boss nice nice <sighs> very good job Yeah, there's a lot you have to pay attention to in this fight, like your position towards him, you don't want to be too close, you don't want to be too far away. 
also don't want to be too close to the edge of the arena that can also make the setup go off in a weird spot uh, and now we're just making our way to the next boat so we have time for more donations Lovely. I will say that this, like having played Kingdom Hearts, you make this look so much easier than I found it. Uh, I want to draw attention to some of the prizes we've got coming up. Uh, throughout the whole event, uh, the grand prize, if you will, uh, is uh, a couple of copies of a PlayStation 5. There's one EU and one uh, North American copy to be won. That's for a $100 cumulative donation throughout the event. There are a couple of $50 prizes as well. Uh, three Nintendo Switches and three RetroTink 5X Pro with SCART adapters, which are very handy bits of kit if you want to stream anything old school. Uh, in terms of some more time uh, sensitive prizes uh, very appropriate ones uh, there is the uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Deluxe Edition uh, that closes at 7am uh, Central European time so that is trying to do maths here about an hour and 40 minutes if I've got that right and there is also the Hat in Time Acrylic Scene which closes three, after, uh, three hours after that at 10am uh, 10 a.m. Central European time uh, after Cygnus completes their A Hat in Time all time pieces run. All right, uh, San Fran. So immediately we go into this fight. Uh, these small enemies are just two shots with thunder. Um, the reason why I put on Rune Ring, uh, oh, okay, <laughs> even though I have uh, less magic from it, it's to give me the extra cost. Uh, so that conveniently I can do just four uh, Fundagas from a full MP bar. Uh, if I didn't have that, then it would be three, and I would have to basically waste an extra ether, and that's just not worth it on this category. Yeah, don't, don't worry about what happened to the boss just now. It, it was nothing. Yeah, just aerial stuff. <laughs> Yeah, that, the thing with Ariel is that uh, uh, with that link you can you can shoot a lot of these projectiles in like all directions. Um, but if the enemy is very big, then you can make it so that just a lot of those projectiles hit on that single enemy, and the 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 damage is just um, <laughs> out of this world in, in uh, those optimal scenarios. Uh, here's another mini game called uh, Shugio, and it's basically just trying to race against. But I don't, I don't even know if it's racing. But uh, you're just trying to touch these checkpoints uh, as fast as possible. We don't have to touch all of them. We just end up skipping a lot of them. <laughs> and it also might look like we need to collect these uh, circles for points, but that really doesn't matter as well. All that matters is we just get to the finish line. Small movement tech here. Um, so there's a checkpoint that you can just uh, get and then it will just kind of auto drop you down to the ball. But if you just air step through it, you grab it and then it just you just fall down. <laughs> I almost got stuck in the air there. That's just PC port stuff. Nothing important. Oh. Yeah, so, some specific movement here. That there are specific checkpoints you need to hit um, for this uh, mini game to progress and give you the next target. They're not really all that visible on your screen, but you know, Yida knows where they are just doing this. A specific movement that he knows he needs to do, clearing all that movement very quickly. Um, and we did just get access to our fifth and final link, uh, which is Stitch. And we're going to use Stitch very quickly, very, very soon. Um, as you might. Well, well would you guess it? 
that is thunder damage. Mm -hmm. I guess you, you probably would guess. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's uh, it's particularly useful for this fight where the area is very limited, and um, the way this works is that you create these square, more of like rectangular areas, and uh, when you use the finisher, you're just going to blast everything uh, in these areas. So since the space is limited, we can easily just cover the whole area and, and hit all the enemies. And yeah, they're getting affected by the electrified status effect right there. That's why when they bump into one another after being electrified, they take a lot of damage. Yeah, the fight went perfectly. Um, sometimes you can have some of uh, them surviving in the end. But as long as Electrify is affecting them and they continuously take damage from it, then it should be easy to get to the last wave for the final hit of Stitch. I did not time that. I can not really see the circle there. So uh, more aerial, just being aerial. Yeah, also this boss I think is weak to water in this phase. I think the volcano part on the back is... Yeah, only that. Oh. Um, but yeah, yeah, you did possibly, if, if you were paying close attention, you might have seen there was another armor mechanic there. But, you know, just the aerial also shredding through that armor, as well as um, its HP. So, no problem there, went uh, pretty much as well as it could have. <coughs> Um, so the interesting thing about San Fran is it uses the same uh, like world box, but there's actually day and night, and that does change uh, a few things. Like for example, some lucky emblems can only show up uh, during the night. Uh, other things like that. <laughs> I I don't remember hearing Donald just. <laughs> well, I I don't know. It, oh, that was great. Also, well, I think only enemies can show up during the night, right? Um. Well, that applies to after you've beaten after, the world. Yeah. Um. Anyway, this is a timed section, so yeah, it's just collecting some money, waiting for this fight to end needs to avoid this uh, boss attacking you could very quickly and easily die if you don't pay attention so needs to be a little bit careful while uh, collecting this money yeah it's just a a time fight uh it can extend if it uh unfortunately attacks uh before the time ends and the game cannot progress until it idles so thankfully that didn't happen there but it can be a very big time loss if that happened. I know. <laughs> so now we have a uh, hero's rescue. So we just rescue them one by one by doing different things. Uh, wasabi on the top there, you just have to dive attack and free him. These ones you just have to use magic that kind of uh, correlates with the color. So the yellow ones I have to use thunder on them, the blue ones I have to use blizzard or water on them. Um, pretty quick, but dangerous if some enemies can just randomly snipe you. We are level 1, so we can get one shot by certain things. Uh, but you just have to go through them quickly. Fred, you just uh, pulse spin and free him from those arms. And this last one is Gogo. Uh, oh, where is it? We just have to ride this ball and touch the other ball. <laughs> Uh, the 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 way um, the the way we shout this uh, it, it may look kind of funny how um, like we we free one person but but there's like a delay before the cutscene happens but by that time uh, we're already freeing another one uh, but the important thing is that we um, get there and uh, free Gogo just in time when when uh, she's like close to that um, big ball that we can use uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something magic boost on food 
Clinton. Is this Dark Cube's boss? So we do have Paraga now increasing our damage, very important for this. Uh, we open with Shotlock, again breaking the stagger endurance of this boss, allowing all our magic to just keep the boss staggered. And our goal, again, is to keep the boss in a loop, uh, not allowing it to attack, and just kill the boss outright. Doing very specific combos, mixing fires and thunders to make sure the timings of the hits are just right to not give the boss the, do the, the time to recover. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know why I had <laughs> like 2 HP left. Maybe it my magic stat isn't right. Nah, yeah, yeah, I think it's may maybe just party members. I, I think your magic is just right. I in fact, you should be hitting, I believe, 44 magic now for the Dark Baymax fight. Yeah, I need to swap uh, to... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. That. Also, I got the uh, Hero's Glove. Um, the the armor so it has a good ability called item boost so it increases the uh the items uh effects by 50 percent um which is really helpful for ethers as well um so now ethers uh during mp recharge can refill the gauge by oh uh okay i'm uh. <laughs> i don't know why this is happening what uh, this is me holding shoot the whole time, by the way. The game is stopping by itself. <laughs> is I this, don't know. Um, maybe it's running higher FPS? I, I'm not sure. Yeah, the, like, like the bug, as far as I understand, seems to be related to... If you have... Um, if your PC is running the game at higher FPS, then this seems to be more common, at least. Whereas Sora just does not want to keep shooting. <laughs> I'm a little worried. <laughs> I yeah, we are we are not damaged because of that. <laughs> Very under damaged. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is me holding R2 the whole time. By the way, I don't know what's going on. I didn't have an issue with this during practice on this specific PC as well. I don't know what's going on. I think we were up. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh. <laughs> mm, I think the phase transition will happen eventually, but it's unfortunate, yeah. Okay, uh... I am way far off the HP threshold for phase 2, by the way. I have to do about a bar more. Okay, now it seems to work. Never mind. <laughs> This never happened before, literally. Yeah, this is one of those <laughs> things. This never happened before. Uh, so my HP is pretty low, so I'm just going to heal immediately. If it happened there, it's probably going to happen here as well. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what's going on. That's scary. Yeah, this fight just got a million times scarier because of that. Yeah, I, I shouldn't be... <laughs> the, the ideal fight is just shooting forever and trying to get it to the DM phase as soon as possible. Uh, but if I'm too slow here, it's gonna... Oh, okay, it's DMing now. It would have done a very, very long sequence where it just flies around and you can't ever hit it. But this is fine. Uh, so it's going to summon these blocks, and these blocks do a lot of damage if you deflect it back to him. So I just want him to do that over and over. Okay. Oof. Yeah, that... <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't die from that. Ow. 
Hey, the fa fortunate, um, what, what the one upside vertical mode has in that fight is that deflecting those cubes back at the boss actually deals more damage than in any other difficulty. It seems to scale with the enemy damage, which, which of course um, on critical mode is higher than any other difficulty. Uh, so fortunately in that last phase, um, with the boss spawning four cubes at once, um, we were able to deal a lot, a lot of damage, even though uh, Sora refused to shoot continuously. Um, all right, so we get to play as Riku for a second time. I'm gonna wait here and then these shadows will spawn. I'm just gonna hit them once. Oh, oh, am I on 60 FPS? No, I, okay. Uh, I might be on 60 FPS, but I'm not sure. Maybe that's why Baymax happened. Uh, but I'm just going to do three hits over and over. I'm not going to do the finisher because it does have a bad reputation of missing. Uh, as long as you don't get hit, you hopefully shouldn't get a DM. I don't know how it really works. Okay, Dark Viraga, and it's red. That's bad. Dark, Dark Viraga does a lot of damage, but unfortunately went red and got resistant to damage. But that's fine, I DM skipped it anyways. Yeah, uh, as for the next fight, it's um, this um, Aqua, but like a dark Aqua. We open up with uh, a Shotlock that should always catch her out of uh, this attack. And then we follow up with a lot of fire. Um, the reason being that um, fire actually um, reduces her revenge value. Oh. Uh, all right. <laughs> Okay, gone out of a loop there, but <laughs> Luther, we're, we're back at it. Uh, so revenge value, we haven't really talked about it much, but normally when you hit enemies or bosses specifically too much, then they just break out of your combos. Uh, unfortunately, not the full shot light. Mm. There is an absolute... Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I wanted that, to that right. is unfortunate. Let me just check something real quick. I oh, it's on 120. I don't know why. Okay, that's weird. Yeah. Also, the thing about Antarqua is she doesn't have high defense, but she can hit very hard. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the um, thing about the advantage value. Uh, fire reduces it instead of increasing it, so uh, we can just use fire over and over uh, and she will not break out of the combo and in fact we it will make it so that we're able to use shot life without any fear of um, hitting that revenge value threshold. Uh, I don't know why I threw the ether there, I didn't need to. <coughs> um, so now we're done with uh, saving Aqua, now we have to play as Aqua next, uh, fighting against Venitas. Uh, it's a pretty short fight. Um, but one thing I'm going to do here now is quickly equip Rune Ring because there's another upcoming fight which is called Ten Cave, and we want to have as many usage of uh, Thundaga as possible. And the fight does give a lot of MP up. So as we're getting MP and making sure we're above uh, like zero MP, then we can just continuously use Thundaga without having to throw any more ethers. So I'm just gonna equip it here. Uh, well anyway, uh, th the way Aqua works is, <laughs> is, a, is a little different from uh, Riku. We, we have another, like, just a very different moveset. One of the unique things is that uh, you can cancel a guard with a jump 
and then follow up with a combo. So that's where you see Ida use here to keep, keep these combos going. We have this Spellweaver form change, which uh, just makes our melee combos better. Uh, it allows us to get quite a few hits in before Vanitas um, breaks out of it. Just dealing a lot of damage uh, without much effort. I'm just gonna shot lock. Don't need a full shot lock. This much should kill him. There we go. <laughs> and now we're moving into uh, basically end game. Um, there's a lot of cutscenes here, so this would be the perfect time for donations. Okie doke. Uh, you may be able to see in the tracker at the bottom of the screen that we're currently uh, 31.5%, uh, just over uh, $31,500 towards our overall marathon total uh, target of $100,000. But uh, in the kind of nearer future, uh, we are only uh, a little under $11 away from already breaking the total that we raised at ESA 2016, and we're only halfway through the week. So very close to, to hitting that target as well. And of course, all the money we raise goes to uh, Alzheimer Fonden, the Swedish fundraising organization that focuses on Alzheimer's and other dementia-related diseases, uh, which are unfortunately seem to be growing in uh, in number, but with the valuable research that foundations like Alzheimer Fonden do, we are hopefully uh, starting to turn back the tide on fighting those debilitating diseases. Final uh, gummy mission, and the goal here is to not crash <laughs> into anything. Endymion does have trouble turning corners. Uh, so you're gonna see me use a tech here. Uh, go into camera mode to stop myself and then immediately get out. Just mainly for tight corners like that. Um, still trying to maximize the amount of boosts I use, but making sure that when I boost I go into these kind of wormhole things. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, just the sheer speed of the ship combined with the uh, narrow passages makes it truly uh, tricky to navigate fast. Uh, this gummy boss we actually have to deal with because this area is just closed. Like what we could use the camera trick to get out of this fight, but we just can't really progress. There's a wall in our way, so we actually need to kill this boss to be able to progress. And now I just kind of sit here. The lasers are moving slower. This is not 120 FPS. <laughs> this is very unusual. Uh, but I, I just kind of sit here and keep shooting. The boost actually does shoot an extra projectile, uh, which does extra damage. Um, it looks like I'm going to miss the cycle here. For some reason, my damage isn't as high as it should be. Uh, but the goal is to just destroy those parts. Can't really destroy them unless they're facing towards you. There we go. So now we're entering the so-called uh, 10k uh, fight. In case two, you have this uh, 1k heartless fight where you have to kill uh, 1,000 heartless. But this is kind of uh, very similar to that. There's no specific number, but it's just bigger in scale. We call it 10k. Uh, anyway, some uh, nasty enemies we need to deal with at the uh, start. Uh, on the top left, you can see that enemy's uh, gauge. So our objective is to I'll reduce that gauge to zero. Uh, most of that will be done with a special command, so we actually need to lower it by about like one fifth, one fourth, something like that, and uh, that, that'll basically be the end of the fight. 
Uh, what we do is we use double arrow guns to sort of spin around the arena, the, the edges of the um, arena, and any of these attacks we do will just destroy all these shadows in Atreides. Those shadows aren't really like real enemies, they're just like, you know, you know, this like, this kind of variation that just dies instantly from anything. So, conveniently, Aragons just doing anything in Aragons just destroys all of them in Atreides, and uh, that's a rather efficient way to reduce that uh, enemy's gauge. Uh oh. Also, uh. a lot of the enemies in this fight hit hard, like, yeah, the Floodlings, for example, they can just snipe you and deal a lot of damage to you. Yeah, these bigger enemies do deplete the enemy's gauge more uh, than the smaller enemies. Uh, we should be almost done by now. Like you don't know what? There it is. <laughs> I, I was waiting for that <laughs> for a while. Uh, I just need to uh, use this mountain crusher to uh, mash and attack really fast to deplete the gate really fast, and then when the game prompts you to do so, use the finisher, and that'll end the fight. Yeah, I think casually playing, you could use this mountain crusher. I think infinitely yes, until the finish. Yeah, you you can technically for a longer while shoot like the enemies in the middle and just yes, grind XP. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you really wanted to, you could like uh, tie your R2 button down and just <laughs> keep shooting and go to sleep or something. But uh, no, not very efficient. Uh, um, obviously, not using that kind of techniques for a speedrun. Um, but fo uh, following that section is uh, Sora Collection. Um, so we just sort of, um, like, us and all of our friends just died. And now we do some trickery to make a comeback. <laughs> so we we'll put ourselves back together uh, by collecting, like, these figures of ourself, of, of Sora. Um, so it's just a movement section. Yeah, for the most part, it's uh, it, it, there's a optimal way to do all this. Uh, there are so many different possibilities, but this is just the best route we happen to come up with. I missed that one. <laughs> yeah, that got seen is actually uh, it was changed in a patch to make it so it triggers automatically. Uh, before that, you would need to interact with one of these stars that's floating around you. It slows down the speed run ever so slightly, but not a big deal. Also in this section you can see how many different animations exist for Sora. <laughs> yeah, so the game tells you to pick up uh, 101 Soras. You can actually pick up to uh, 333. And you get two extra HP bonuses uh, for 222 and then 333. Um, obviously, we're not going to go for that. It's not necessary and it takes forever to go for 333. Uh, but right now, it's just collecting a bunch of them in the groups. Uh, not really much else to say, so. I guess uh, it's time uh, a good time for donations. This is. <laughs> <laughs> really surreal and trippy, but I have to say I'm quite enjoying it. It's, there's something quite uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice about the whole thing. Uh, keeping an eye on the uh, upcoming bid wars and incentives we've got, uh, the most time pertinent of those uh, concern the Pokemon Sword Tower of Two Fists speedrun uh, that Jordan97 is doing in a couple of hours, uh, currently scheduled to be uh, just after 10 o'clock on, uh, hang on, yeah, 10 o'clock Central European time. Uh, there is the bid war to uh, 
pick the Sobel name. Uh, James Pond is currently in the lead with $100 because speedrunners love puns, but of course there's plenty of time to overturn that if you've got any uh, even cleverer suggestions. And as well as that, there is the uh, there is the incentive to upgrade from uh, not getting Urshifu to, uh, to getting Urshifu, and that is currently at $325 out of $1,500. But I know that with a big push this morning, we can absolutely reach there. All right, so uh, this is the lich section. Um, so basically, the uh, the friends have all died, basically, and we're just trying to uh, revive them all by defeating li uh, lich every time. So we start off with uh, an Olympus revisit, and we're going to do a very big shop here. First thing I'm going to do is just sell all the useless accessories and armor I have. And as well as the elixir, um, I'm going to also synth, uh, hopefully, some refocuses. Okay, two high refocuses, that's great. Don't need any more. Uh, ether, why not? Don't want to run low on that ever. Uh, and then now I'm just going to buy one sorcerer's ring, because why not? It's extra magic stat. Uh, and then we're going to buy new food, so... This is pretty much the last time we're going to be getting new food. Uh, 19 ethers is a good count. Uh, I'm going to be cooking the extra one here. Um, and then this, this ba the main setup now is basically two sources ring and the one force ring. I'm going to be eating new food. <clears throat> oh, and I forgot to uh, do one more thing. Uh, we got Glide from beating 10k as well. Uh, but we're also going to be taking off Sonic Slash. Because it would, it will ruin certain fights if we still have it. <sighs> Sacrificing a little bit of movement. What was that glitch? <laughs> uh oh. Uh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything seems normal. Uh, don't worry about it. Yeah, if we're able to get in the portal before the Lich can go in there, you can, like, move around free and use Fandaras. Yeah. <laughs> Not only that, but it was like half of the Lich was just visually stuck there somewhere before the portal. <laughs> but yeah, um, on beginner we would be able to uh, kill the Lich immediately using those uh, Glitch Thundagas, but... On level one, it's still worth it to go for it, uh, because it's just free damage in a very short amount of time. I messed up. That is not meant to be <laughs> a 26, uh, but this should kill, hopefully. All right. <laughs> is that, there are some differences between the um, liches of these different worlds. This particular Lich actually takes more damage from our shot locks than any of the other ones. And uh, some of these will have increased resistances against certain elements. Uh, for example, some of them will resist uh, Sunders or Sundagas would be uh, less effective. But for the most part, we're just going to be using two shot locks that essentially Back takes off. care of um, the Lich, wherever it is. Yeah, so that's the general uh, standard Lich shred. You just want to do one full shot lock into a full Thundaga combo to basically stun it down to the ground, and then you just want to do a partial shot lock. Uh, it's much faster than doing two full shot locks because of the long, like, full yeah. shot lock animation. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, some fights, uh, or some Lich will, some Liches will have uh, resistance to Thunder. So, uh, those ones we would have to do two full shot locks anyways. This one is not, so I can just do this again. Yeah, something you need to watch out for. This one, for example. If you let this Lich do its thing, it's going to spawn a lot of large bodies that you would need to deal with before you can move on to kill the boss. Um, fortunately, we have a simple solution to that, which is uh, shot locking his Sondaga. Yeah, 
Yeah, once it spawns those large enemies, you're better off uh, retrying. Yeah. You don't really have the tools to deal with them. So this uh, toy box is one of those that are resistant to thunder, so we just have no choice but to do two for shot locks here. Then there's the um, Legend Corona, which is kind of the uh, perhaps the most infamous one since this area is very um, large. And uh, if this Lich gets away, then it can run away from you for a very long time. And <laughs> yeah, you'll have a bad time chasing it. But uh, we shouldn't be having those kinds of problems. Please stay still. Okay. <laughs> it was moving and I was a bit scared. Yeah. Hey, stop! But yeah, it has this thing where as it moves, it makes clones and your attack just uh, targets the clone instead of the Lich itself, uh, which is annoying. It can uh, make you basically miss your shot locks. Um, this is the last one and it is also one of those that are resistant to thunder, so we have to do two full shot locks again. Okay, he's doing the uh, fire. Easiest opening. Nice. <laughs> All right, and more cutscenes and movements, so uh, this would be a good time for a donation. Looking again at some of the prizes we've got going up, I've told, told you about some of the stuff we've got at the higher end, but even if you uh, don't have that much to uh, contribute financially, you can still get into to win some fantastic prizes. Uh, at the bottom end, for just $5 over the course of the event, you can be entered in to win the uh, beautiful Mushroom Kingdom pixel art. Uh, there's a variety of $10 prizes as well, uh, including the uh, Kirby plushes, which are just adorable, and the really cool Zelda keychain set. And as we say, as you go up through the uh, up through the donations again all of these are cumulative throughout the event you can win such prizes as the uh, video games world map or the undertale art book for 15 dollars uh, uh the view sonic elite who of course view sonic are providing the uh the monitors for this event which we thank them for and that's a 40 dollar cumulative donation all the way up to the retro tink and the switch for 50 dollars and the playstation 5 disc versions one for europe and one for north america and those are a hundred dollar cumulative donation throughout the course of this week. Uh, so what we're doing now is some uh, more trickery with Ariel against huge bosses. Uh, well, during phase one the boss is huge, uh, during phase two not so much, but Ariel still remains effective as long as we can remain close. Uh, out of there. Ugh. With enough damage, we can move on to some uh, shot locks to finish up the fight. With, uh... Yeah, I, I did not do a, a lot of damage with my first aerial. Yeah, yeah. Also, Ida was equipping the Ying Yang Cuffling that we um, I picked up earlier to do as much damage as possible with aerial for this boss fight here. It does have a different position when you retry, um, which is annoying because I can't really do the same setup as I normally want to. It's doing a dive attack, so using the finisher here isn't actually bad. Also, it's just safer anyways. You don't die during the finisher. Yeah, the dive attack isn't what you would optimally see, but... Yeah, that, there's definitely some RNG involved. We're gonna try to deal with what we get. 
Alright, it's moving away. Uh, I think I'll just use two more aerials afterwards, but for now I'm just gonna shot lock and hope for the best. Okay, so this attack is just coming towards me over and over. Hopefully I can hit it. Nope, not really. But it should stop attacking now and I can just try and hit it. Yeah, but we gotta hurry up so that we can skip no. this long desperation move where we cannot actually... It's just it. circling around me. Yeah. Can't hit it. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, it's, oh. yeah, it's the enemy. Yeah, that was some of the most unfortunate patterns I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this normally never happens. I just completely under-damaged it. Um, but you can just glide around in this DM. It's not really that bad. And then at a certain point when it's surrounding you, you drop down and it will just push you up really high and they shouldn't hit you anymore. Moving on though, uh, we have this so-called uh, Union Cross section where uh, uh, we have to use, we have to press a lot of triangle. <laughs> yeah, you see all these names here, uh, that there's this, um, this mobile game, U Union Cross, that had this event where uh, when you participated you were able to get some uh, tickets into the raffle, or if, if you if you won, then you got your name, um, like your, your account name of that, that game. And your chosen union got put into this game right here. Uh, maybe some of you watching might be here, who knows? But I'm definitely not in there, even though I had a chance. <laughs> but yeah, this is basically just the whole thing, just mashing triangle, well, timing it to... Uh, it, it, it helps uh, skip uh, names for you if you time it, but uh, yeah, there's not really much else going on, so uh, this would be a good time for donations. Super. Uh, a reminder that as well as uh, donations, which get you entered into win those prizes that I mentioned previously, there are other ways of supporting uh, Alzheimer Fonda, Alzheimer Fonda during ESA. Uh, all the profits generated from a speedrun store to get the uh, super fancy and fashionable ESA merch will go to Alzheimer Fondant throughout the event and as well as that any uh, Twitch bits or subs to a ESA this week will also go to Alzheimer Fondant so there are multiple ways of uh, getting involved and helping to raise money And that's Demon Tide. Uh, we get Kuraga here as well. Not really different from Kyura, I'd say, <laughs> with the amount of HP we have. But it's there. So now we're uh, at the last couple of fights, uh, the organization. And... If I can describe them in one sentence, it's just rough spam. Yeah. Technical yeah. rough spam. We're going to see boss after boss after boss after boss, and we're going to track it and track it and track it and track it. And maybe it's aerial in between. Alright, so. Uh. Oh, I, you want to shot lock Zigbar or Riku or Ansem, it doesn't matter, but I just like to target Zigbar because he is the hardest uh, hit with Ralph uh, later in the fight. But now we just want to catch them. Uh, 
Okay. So something you can do here is uh, with your positioning and uh, camera, you can sort of manipulate where these uh, bosses teleport to. Right there, the sick bar just teleported into the valve setup. Um, so we were able to just build freely and then just have the boss come over and take all that damage. Sick bar, get in there. Okay. No, Ricky. Ricky? <laughs> get in there. Uh. Okay. Also, we are trying to push most of those bosses towards the wall so that they cannot get thrown out of the valve setup. Okay, so it's just Riku by himself. Uh, he's one of those that I can just aerial because his DM just has him uh, coming downwards and aerial just hits him a bunch of times easy. So. Uh, pretty important chest here because of how tight we are on money. Mega elixir, uh, which we will sell in a bit. For, but now we are moving on to uh, Marluxia, Luxine, and Luxord. Yeah, this first base here is a timed section. Uh, Luxord isn't really uh, your target here in any way, uh, but we can deal damage to Marluxia and Luxine. And we hope to deal as much damage as we can, but we uh, have to make sure that we use Shroud okay. <laughs> in time before this section ends, or, or we will achieve nothing. That <laughs> I didn't do any damage to Luxine, unfortunately I can get her into the Ralph setup. Uh, for this section, you need to find Luxord from one of his cards. And when you do, and, and you attack that card, Luxord will be stunned in that position for a while. Uh, and we're going to do the shelf setup to deal one big hit on him. And he just instantly dies. The thing is, if, if you just uh, use smaller hits, smaller attacks, then y you can only deal a little bit of damage, and then he's going to break out and go hide in another card but if you just deal one big attack he just dies yeah also a nice thing by finishing off the last phase with Ralph is that we can get half of our MP bar back basically only having to use one Eva to get into the next half setup okay so Luxine has a lot of HP so I need to build another Ralph uh, structure Yeah, just setting it all up pretty in that position and just have her go there. She will uh, happily do so. No! Oh, okay. This should just finish, yeah. Didn't even need to tell her twice. He, uh, <laughs> she just went there immediately. <clears throat> um, so now we're in a kind of break between the uh, the organization fights. Um, this is a small puzzle. You just have to uh, open the doors so these panels in the by touching panels are switches for the doors. that are switches for the doors. Yeah. And the solution is... Uh, the sol solution is really quite something. You have to go in a circle and then, then, then it's solved. Um... So we want to go to the BBS fight before the Cyax fight. Um, so Cyax uh, is a fight that lets us set up for a fight afterwards, but for now, these guys are pretty much the same as the others. Uh, you just ralph them. Uh, you can't camera manipulate them, but they do always try to stay on you, so you can just bait them into these structures. Um, oh. <laughs> this is kind of a difficult situation, but 
you can just slam them and they should keep bouncing. Terranaut, please come over. I need you. There we go. Over here, he says. Okay, a decent amount of damage. That's good. Okay, Vanitas, please stay there. Okay. Terra, not stay there. Just out of reach? I, yeah. <laughs> You're in the light, turn. <laughs> yeah, Terra, unfortunately, has some of these attacks during which he cannot be frozen. Uh. So you kind of need to have him end one of his dashes into the light or use uh, that um, melee combo attack uh, during which he can be frozen. Oof. Yeah, we are trying to kill Vanitas first. His desperation move is just very long. Alright, so he has a lot of HP. We can do one shot lock here and then we can summon Stitch. Uh, we we just build a square around uh, the Guardian. Go to the center. We do want it to hit us a bit um, so that our HP is low enough for a death abuse uh, in the next fight. But for now, as he comes in, these should all hit him. Yeah. yeah. That's completely consistent. He always uses that combo attack um, right after the desperation attack. So we can just set up the stitch and, and it'll just hit surely well, do a lot of damage very easily. Um, now for uh, Syx fight, um, you see that Berserk. Um, well, well, first of all, we're, we're going to die, and uh, we're, we have a little. Um, setup we're going to do for this we're going to be using lots of shot locks um so first of all in the, in the top left corner of the screen you will see this berserk gauge and during the first phase we need it to uh fill which will trigger the transition to the second phase and the easiest way for us to do that is to just use shot locks uh, of course, the damage will also carry over to second phase. Uh, she only be alone. Uh, you also don't want the shot lock to hit she on just because, well, she's not in the next part of well she is in the next part of the fight but <laughs> you're not fighting her so there's no reason to do damage on her you just want all the damage on science that's scary okay so now that the berserk gauge is full you should go to the next phase um so the reason why i equipped a uh, base fire uh, on my second commands is because it is going to build the same amount of arrows as fire raga anyways but it is much more mp efficient so what I'm trying to do here is uh, build up these specific forms. Okay, and also Roxas is here to help out. He does a lot of damage, and I can just freely use fires while I'm keeping my distance. Yeah, all these claymores that Syx is throwing—they one-shot us. So <laughs> we do not want to get hit by. Even a single one of those. Yeah, Roxas is putting in a lot of work now. Please give me the form. Okay, so we have counter shield and wizard claws now, and now we just want to store them. Uh, I can just do this. No. <laughs> Mm. His berserk gauge just went full and he became iframe. That sucks. On the moon's pale light. Uh, but he's almost dead anyways. I Okay, I don't know why I did that. Roxas, please. I don't know if that's enough. Okay. Yeah. So we, we have built our form changes, counter shield. Um, we have already seen. Um, Blizzard Claws, that is something that will allow us to use 
magic around Sora instead of shooting projectiles. And something that's unique about that is that it adds very little revenge value, meaning that we can keep a boss in like a loop, uh, just continuously using that AoE Fyraga, just dealing a lot of damage, able to keep that up for a very long time. Uh, that is something we're going to utilize in this upcoming fight. The um, 3x triple north, wha whatever you want to <laughs> call this. At first you need to deal uh, enough damage to one of them to uh, do the space transition. It's going to be a little cutscene here and then like a mini desperation attack as some like to call it. Where... Um, all of three of them do their own little attack. Um, we're uh, our, our next step is to use counter shield to uh, target Young Xehanort. Um, he has the least HP, and he is our current target. Like that, this this aggro system that uh, always like one of the bosses is targeting you, and um, that is Young Xehanort right now. And we're going to counter his melee attacks. Okay, that's scary. Uh. Yeah, uh, going for those critical counters, just immensely phrasing the damage that the Wrathful Flurry is doing. I'm gonna lose the... F oh, okay. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> Uh, it was interesting recovery, uh, but it worked out. Um, so one of them is just out of the game now, only Zemnas and Ansem remaining. Uh, now Counter Shield is not so useful because first of all Zemnas is immune to thunder damage. Oh. Uh, okay, uh, second chance <laughs> coming in handy there. I'm gonna have to still guard something to build up one of the charges. There we go. Mickey just healed Riku instead of you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I, I've got a couple of donations when you've got a moment. Uh. <laughs> I think after the fight. Will do. As, now, as, as mentioned, putting those uh, that, that AOE magic right. to use just. Uh, able to keep that combo up for a very long time uh, using Farasa Grand Magic as we get it. Just very quickly melting those HP bars. Uh, just Ansem remaining. Uh, this fight is definitely not over yet. Ansem is way more resistant to really all kinds of damage than the others. I'll be taking an intentional death quote unquote here for the Koopa coin and then this will restore my uh, MP as if it's uh, I used an ether and it's really good it's just just an extra MP bar for Ansem as you can see his HP is pretty much full we need all the fires we can get uh, but now I'm just gonna try and get him to do this move guard and then three arrows just enough to get a form hopefully nope <laughs> Uh, there we go. I just have to wait for him to do something again. Okay. Yeah, something we want to see during this phase is our party members just joining in uh, on the front, <laughs> just uh, attacking the boss. Their attacks don't add any revenge value and they do have pretty high damage. Uh, dealing physical damage that uh, Ansem doesn't resist quite as much as the other attack elements. Oh. Please kill! Okay. <laughs> Alright. Good fight.
Yeah, that is uh, my favorite fight in the run. I only run this category for that fight. <laughs> Um, and, yeah, we have time for donations now. <laughs> what a fight. Well dealt with. Really well dealt with. Uh, a couple of donations here. One from Un Phantasma Mass, uh, from, which is $11, and says, Hi, I was told that with this we beat the ESA 2016 total donations. So, hi. And that is bang on. We have indeed passed our uh, total donations for ESA 2016. So good job, everyone. Uh, that goes to the uh, Tower of Two Fists uh, James Pond nickname, which makes it a nice, aesthetically pleasing $111. And uh, Obaka donates $100, saying, first time catching an ESA live and an in-person one at that. Here's to another event benefiting charity. Couldn't agree more. Uh, their $100 goes to uh, obtaining Urshifu in the Tower of Two Fist speedrun, which is now at $425 out of $1,500. So, so don't worry about the boss that just died very quickly there, which just used a lot of Eroga. Uh, this boss, uh, Armor of Xehanort, uh, well, well, maybe you can guess what our strategy is. <laughs> it's going to be rough. We're going to wreck it. Uh, it it's, it's rather tricky um so so this boss also has uh three phases so we only need to deal like a certain amount of damage we're not going for the entire hp bar with what we're doing right now uh but still that doesn't mean we don't need a good setup here oh i punched the top okay uh uh okay at this point i just want to get him to dm health uh that's about the right amount. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that is not a DM. Uh, <laughs> okay, DM. Thank you. So, at this point, you just uh, have to aerial. He will just do uh, attacks towards you. Uh, but I'm gonna wait until I guard two of these and then I can aerial here. Yeah, optimally we, we could just skip all of this with a really good draft setup, but uh, it, is, uh, it is not a given. It's, it's not easy to get that. A lot of the time you end up in a situation like this, but uh, aerial, very useful. Uh, moving on to second phase, uh, underwater combat. What we're going to do is use C arrow. As I mentioned earlier, all of our C magic have uh, the same damage multiplier. So even though arrow is normally not the best offensive spell, underwater is just as good as anything else. And since we do have some arrow boosts on us, uh, it, it's just it's just really good. It, it's it, it instantly hits the boss wherever it is, and we just sort of keep him in a kind of a loop. We do three arrows in a row, and then have a small break. The boss teleports somewhere. And then we just keep doing that over and over. And most of the time, we stagger the boss uh, right after the teleport before he has to do anything at all. Uh, just a little DM attack. Uh, you can't really skip it on level one, but you can make it a little shorter by dodging his uh, third melee attack and just uh, going away. Okay. And now uh, I'm just going to take an intentional death to refill the focus I used in phase one. Hopefully it's quick. Yeah, if, if you manage to do first phase without having to use focus, you don't need to die there. But in this case, uh, we do. So we're going to need that shot lock. We will be using it right now. We will want to use two shot locks uh, from the get-go. Interesting camera. <laughs> um, okay, Worked so out. he will DM now. Um, and I equipped an extra refocuser just to deal with the DM phase. Yeah, after, after all the uh, 
lapping and strat hunting. I was able to get very close to skipping this DM entirely, but it's just not possible on level 1 crit. We just have to take it, but it's not really a big deal. You can kill him very quickly after. And now we're moving on to the final fight in the game. Uh, also has two phases, and um, our strategy for the two phases is to uh, prep both of those phases. <laughs> This is looking really good. Uh. Uh. Not going for a chain 5 here, 2 chain 4s for the last 2 is still big damage. Uh, not perfect, but 2 shot locks should get him to the final phase now. Uh, see if he attacks here. Yes, he's attacking. Yeah, all these teleport attacks are kind of uh, annoying for us to deal with. Can't really use our shot locks during that. Have to just wait it out. All right, and I'm gonna take another death. Just to get focus back. Um, and this is hopefully going to skip the rage form phase. Yeah, the, this will be a rather unique Ralph setup, uh, but we will just uh, start with the shot lock, um, just to bring his HP down while this attack is going on. I'm gonna do a, another partial shot lock. You, you don't need to. Uh, okay, that's bad. That's really bad. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> we're fine. We're fine. So we're building a sort of straight line towards him right now. Uh, and we're gonna finish it up with a downwards facing block into an upwards facing block and you can just see the beauty of that chain just going to explode one after another a lot of those blocks are gonna hit and it will just kill the boss once he's back up there so one more time we're gonna wreck it <laughs> My heart, okay. <laughs> uh, Alright. Good recovery. <laughs> um, <laughs> time ends when, uh, well, after dying, I have to die to win. Um, yeah, it's still, it's still a little bit away from here. <coughs> Gonna mash some buttons to uh, get Sora back up. The power of friendship. Yes. And the time stops once the beam hits Xehanort. Yeah, that, <laughs> that run was very rough. <laughs> a lot, a lot <laughs> went wrong there. But uh, I managed to make it in the end. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for having me. It was really fun to do this. Um, big shout outs to uh, my friends who are on the couch, uh, big boys, um, the Cage Free community. And uh, please check out Kina, who's going to be run by my friend Logic <laughs> um, later on today. Why? Uh, and yeah, thanks for having me. It's over now. You lost. GG, great run. We're going to take a quick break as we go to intermission, but don't go anywhere because uh, Gamero is going to slide into my seat and Cygnus is going to absolutely smash a hat in time. Thanks, everyone. Oh.